Technology under threat from dinosaurs. Defending the peace. IBS World News. Hello, viewers. I am Ivy the Android, and here is the latest news. This is footage of last week's major dinosaur outbreak. As you can see, an exo-fighter unit was on the scene to stop the raptor swarms. Ivius's superior dinosaur forecasting and cutting-edge exosuit technology were able to keep human casualties to zero. Exosuit development is proceeding under the guidance of the next-gen AI, Leviathan. Meanwhile, Ivius continues to recruit candidates to become new exo-fighters. Humanity's greatest hope. Here are the latest images of recently developed exosuits. Ibius's advancements make our world a better place. And we owe it all to Heizol. Technology for the future. Technology for you. Another Exofighter recruit, right? Welcome to Ibius. We'll begin by registering your data. Data logging complete. Please proceed to the firing range. You will now take an ExoFighter aptitude test. Leviathan will provide instructions for operating exosuits. Do not deviate from Leviathan's guidance. Hello, I am Leviathan, your IBS supervisor. Watch your drones ensure your safety by monitoring your performance. We want to know how you are doing. Welcome to the ExoFighter Aptitude Exam. Listen closely as we review the operation of ExoSuit version 932, Deadeye. First, direct your attention to the watcher, and don't forget to smile. Moving to marker one. Moving to marker one. Field now. I'll go ready now. Use the feed ability to repair your ally. The Dominator is the last word in dinosaur control. Equipping the Dominator allows you to command dinosaurs in combat. Equip your Dominator now. Activate your Dominator and try summoning a Carnotaurus. Take full advantage of this biological weapon and destroy the dummy. Return to your interview location and await instructions. Well done. Cap 
calculating aptitude test result. Result, exemplary. Congratulations. You are now a member of the IBS family. As a new EXO fighter, IBS will be assigning you to an extremely safe detachment. Patrol unit number 52585, code name, the Hammerheads. We look forward to seeing you grow with IBS. IBS promptly formed the committee tasked with investigating the cause of the incident at Second Tower. Some involved playing the rogue AI Leviathan is operating under the sophistication of an AI computer program. This thing happened. No, Victor Island is still up in the news. IBS called up the Leviathan's malfunction. Can you address the reports of exofighter patrols on the island? Reports of exofighter patrols are simply untrue. IBS is committing all the most glorious work to the investigation. Get out! We don't exist. Hey, what do you think this is? Bank's boarding house? You want something to do? Go get that suit of one over. Another year of fixing the suit, huh? Well, I'm too big to dance. Too old to see. What? Check me off, Quaker. Absolutely not. What's the matter, race? Circling Leviathan day and night boring you. No, no, I, I'm ready. I, I'll be old. Swiss Army knife on the side. If that doesn't make for a great technician, I don't know what does. Ugh! Patrol. Patrol what? Nothing has come on or off this island in three years. We're assigning you to a new team. Don't think of it as a demotion. Think of it as a... a... Well, the Leviathan's right there. You think you can see us? Attention crew. Vortex warning from Ivius HQ. We're not on dino duty today. Vortex hazard level 5. Tell you what. Heads, we'll go check it out. Tails, not our problem. Not our problem. Oh, fucking blasting! Ah, uh, teeth? Sunday, out of curiosity, where is that vortex? There. Get that thing out of here! Move your ass. Greetings. I am Leviathan, your AI guide. Welcome to Bikitoa Island. Under my supervision, IBS conducts its most important research at this facility. Wonderful news. You have been granted permission to participate in ongoing IBS research and development. I will allow your survival if you demonstrate outstanding combat capabilities. 
Remember, enthusiastic participation is mandatory. As an IBS employee, your compliance is our expectation. Initiating dimensional integration. Research subject, exofighters. Transferring subject to new war game phase. Welcome to my research facility. Shot a dinosaur before. Oh. All right, Ricky. Let me show you the ropes. Hey there, Hardcase. You can call me Magnum. The next working instance will include newly hired exo fighters. Prepare for initialization. Hired, eh? <laughs> oh, good luck to you, rookie. Dimensional transport initiated. Oh yeah. Teams are firefighting these war games, you know. I mean, we aren't the only nut jobs risking our hides. Ready to win? Death is likely beyond this point. Sustained cardiac distress may occur. Follow for a satisfying war game experience. It ain't kidding either. Do just as it says, and you'll be fine. If you want to survive. You better complete the assignment. Exo Miners, follow the Watcher. Initiating Dinosaur Call Mission. Preparing combat area. Please wait. Providing new targets. Engage and eliminate the Raptors. Shower him with lead and put him to bed! Warning, you are at risk of being surrounded. Listen up, hard case. It's either kill or be killed out here. Don't want to end up dino chow, do ya? to your next objective. Let me fill you in on a neat little trick. You can view mission info by bringing up help navigation. Use this when you're in a pinch. Your work has provided valuable ground-to-air combat. 
data. You're getting pretty good at this. Keep it up. Proceed to your next objective. You catching on yet? Leviathan runs these war games and pulls hundreds, thousands of exofighters from other dimensions right here to beautiful Bikatoa Island. And that includes you and me, Hardcase. Follow the Navla and join the mission. Providing a new target. Engage and eliminate the press air moves. Now that's a big one. If you don't want another hole, then don't get in front of that thing. Play it safe. All right, roadblock. Stop it in its tracks. Good. Now hit him with your overdrive. Objective complete. This is fantastic large dinosaur combat data. Looking good over there. Team work pays off, eh? Exofighters, please proceed to the next objective. Not sure if you've noticed, but it's the year 2040. We were on Bikatoa Island the day the Stratovator came down. Leviathan was operating war games then, too. And those war games are run on repeat day after day so that mugs like you and I can fight in them. Over and over and over. I'm sure you've got questions, so listen up. We're gonna be sent back to our dimensions when this war game's done. You might have seen a corpse on the ground before Leviathan yanked you. Those bones are wrapped around a device. Scoop it up and connect it to your carrier. Your data is being evaluated. Exceptional. Updating your files. You are an exceptional specimen. Respond to this exceptional threat. Providing a new target. Engage and eliminate the T-Rex. The fighter's gotta be taken to peace. It's your first day on the job. And we're up against one of those. Zipper's trash! Shit! Roadblock's done for two. I need that. Exercise logged. Sunsetting temporal instance. Have a super day. <laughs> another die, another dinosaur. That's nice hustle, hard guys. Hey, like this. Good luck. See you around, mate. <laughs> What is in this thing? Tequila, creme de menthe, in my secret ingredient, scotch, balm, and pepper. Oh. Uh, okay, okay. I think I got it. Think? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh, just. Oh. 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 Okay, I definitely got it. No response on all radio frequencies. Connection to IBS network failed. Forget the network connection, Sandy. 
Just try to contact Ace. Ugh, if Ace would have survived, they would have checked in by now. You're underestimating his team, your majesty. Just stop calling me that. Oh! Sorry, sorry, bit of a bitch there. <sighs> Ace is going to make it. Yeah, the chief's right, you match. I mean, Ace might not have called in, but you know these strong silent types are. Oh, I'll slap my ball bearings. Ace really isn't dead. Facility. I require Exo Fighters for a live combat test. The first team to complete all of the assigned objectives wins. The winning team will be flagged for continued existence. before the enemy team. Your team is victorious. Repeat, you are victorious. Wonderful news. You have been granted permission to survive. You are an ideal specimen for a very important experiment. Your new assignment is the Perpetual War Game. Explore your potential in vigorous lethal interface with dinosaurs and your fellow exo-fighters alike. I require the best possible combat data in order to develop the best possible exosuit. Do your part, survive the war game, and generate robust combat data. Progress. Threat level rising. Research subject exo fighters. War game transitioning to infinite repetition. Humans. Fight and die for me. Fighters. 
Warriors, welcome to the war game. I am the Advanced Artificial Intelligence Leviathan. I require all Exo Fighters to participate in the combat tests. This is a two-team competitive scenario. Those on the other side are the enemy team. The first team to complete all of the assigned objectives wins. The winning team will be eligible for bonus existence. Data indicates that human beings improve their performance through competition. Compete to win, and compete to live. Compete to achieve research excellence. This won't be a vanity. before the enemy team. Your team is victorious. Repeat, you are victorious. Wonderful news. You have been granted permission to survive. You are an ideal specimen for a very important experiment. Your new assignment is the Perpetual War Game. Explore your potential in vigorous lethal interface with dinosaurs and your fellow exo-fighters alike. I require the best possible combat data in order to develop the best possible exosuit. Do your part, survive the war game, and generate robust combat data. Deep learning in progress. Threat level rising. Research subject exofighters. War game, transitioning to infinite repetition. Humans. Fight and die for me. Majesty? Mm. Can I be of assistance? I just need a circuit jump here. Oh. And voila. Not everything can be fixed with robot arm. No, Majesty. Majesty, you wound me. Okay, Sandy. Open a connection. Connection ready. <laughs> ah, I got it working. All right. How you doing, mate? Oh, you're the rude boy that pulled my pilot's feet out of the fire. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what kind of name is Magnum? Well, let me get out of here. You can ask me, man. You get that suit fixed up here. We got our priorities. I'm making sense of this situation. War games and parallel worlds. You've been living cloudy with a chance of raptors for two years. Is this a big about to cheer? Three. Three years. Fuck off. You're, you're somewhere on this island. That's the only explanation. The name's Lorenzo. You grew up on the design race cars, right? With your little seat. Only you ended up in the nest. And Haraka ended up... Hey! That's enough! I'm not saying funny here, Ross Clot! Chief, you want to try talking to Parallel, you? Another one. Hmm. Still handsome. Oh. Great deed. I'm gonna swipe him, mate. Hmm? Your Lorenzo's never swallowed his stuff. That's why I gave us that coin. Yeah. That's parallel world money, mate. Magnum? Yeah. Have you, uh, seen one of me over there? Oh, man, I've never seen one of you. 
Nice hardware. Reckon he's a lifting. Hey. <laughs> now wait a minute, I'm not. Now listen up. Hmm? The Viking's got our plums in a blender. It's trying to build stronger exosuits, so it's pulling any extra fighter it can get hold of back in time to these bloody war games. Now you win, your fabulous prize is more bloody war games. Hey! And you lose, you die. And your whole crew starts to death. Well, that's not an option. No, I reckon it's not. It's one way or another. Value team members. Prepare for dimensional integration in 10 minutes. See? I assume you're gonna be back in 2040. I remember. You need to keep fighting until we can figure out how to destroy the Viking. All right? You stay alive, mate. I'm with you. Chief, what was that? Chief, there were two of you. I don't understand. Don't, I don't know. I don't think I believe it. And I know I don't understand it. But right now, we got a suit to fix. Let's get to it. Something wrong, man. I've never heard the chief raise his voice like that. Oh, when I mean, he spoke about Haruka, it's the chief sister. She died. I mean, it's in his file. I mean, Sandy has it. She has all our files. Have Aj, have you not read them? Absolutely not. It is inappropriate to read that. Wait, have you read? Is that my file? Are you reading? Did you read my file? I would never just the teeniest ace. Ace, listen to me, okay? You have to find one of me over there. It's not funny, ace. Ace, I could be talking to myself. You're doing it now. I am available for tactical support and mental counseling. facility. I require exofighters for a live combat test. I am recording satisfactory results in the downtown area. Please offer more high quality combat data. Transfer complete. The war game will begin shortly. Have a suit again. You will now engage in a dinosaur combat test. Exo fighters, follow the watcher. Summon draft. Congratulations. That was a maximally effective battle. Exemplary results like these allow for accelerated development timelines. Generate the quality combat data I seek. Alrighty. I think we've got our first step to making sense of this cluster flip. Have a gander. This was shot from the carrier's nose camera as we were crashing. This is the first glimpse of Pikatoa anyone's had in three long years. The place is shattered. I can't see a single light on anywhere. 
In all likelihood, we were alone. Well, unless you count Leviathan, I guess. Sandy can get all kinds of info, even from a simple image like this. Even this limited data has yielded preliminary results. Still, the real gold mine is 2040, not this pile of overgrown ruins. We'll pull data straight from the source. Okay, let me grab Madge and the Chief and we'll see where we stand. Sandy, love, be a dear and open the file on the Bikatoa incident. Certainly. The year was 2040, at exactly 4.58 p.m. on August 16th. The cable of the Stratovator which joined the IBS Research Compound to the station in geosynchronous orbit experienced a catastrophic failure. The failure precipitated a partial collapse onto the island below. The incident functionally eradicated Tuvao City. An estimated 215,000 human lives were lost in the main population center of the city. The debris weighed approximately 300,000 tons, and the energy released by its impact was equivalent to 20 million tons of dynamite. But according to these logs, uh, the collapse was preceded by a mass dinosaur outbreak. Yes, the very first. And now we know that outbreak was courtesy of Leviathan. There must have been some kind of evacuation effort. Sandy, is there any data on how many people made it off the island? Debris from the Stratovator's impact created a 60-meter tsunami that overwhelmed the majority of the civilian escape vessels. Total known survivors, 413. Lord Almighty, half a million people. Correct. Ibius records indicate less than 1% of the population survived the incident. And the Leviathans kept the island sealed off ever since. We are the first living people to see the... outcome. And is you're telling us you were there in 2040. Physically, you saw the Stratovator collapse. And Leviathan just happens to be running his war games right before worst industrial disaster of our time. Perfect. Just perfect. At least this puts things into perspective. Artificial intelligence, Leviathan. You're on quite a streak lately. Continue performing at a high level, and your extended existence authorization is all but greenlit. shortly. Have a super day. You will now engage in a dinosaur combat test. Exofighters, follow the Watcher. Initiating dinosaur combat. Preparing combat area. Please wait. Summoning raptors.
you are victorious. This team demonstrates tremendous potential. There will be a rest interval until the next combat test. Take full advantage of this incredible employee benefit. This transmitter, how does it work? Gee, uh... Well, um... Don't ask me. Ace found it, I just... Turned it on. Somehow. You kid me? This is joke time now? Okay, wait. Wait, let's focus on what we do know. We know it transmits between timelines. So, it has to be tied into Leviathan's programming. That much I know. You brought the piece of Leviathan on board the carrier? You are maniac. This doesn't look like a piece of Leviathan. It's more like a... Leviathan... egg. And you... are twisted. Finally, we're starting to get data from 2040. This is great, Sandy. Thank you, Technician Alders. Okay, Sandy, we've talked about this. You can just call me Alders. Understood. Professional etiquette now set to non-essential. Alders. Perfect. Now, now Ace, with your exosuit as a relay, we've managed to hook into the island's surveillance network during the war game. And this nonsense? It's happening all over the island. Downtown, the dam, the airport, you name it. Listen to what this bastard was banging on about when we got this image. Exo fighters, get ready to update your survival character. This scenario needs a hostility upgrade. Reload them and prepare for incoming dinosaur targets. Hostility upgrade? Leviathan has a five alarm hard on for dinosaurs. Magnum was right. It's running this island like some kind of massive combat tech R&D project, and for some reason, it's fixated on dinosaurs as the ultimate opponent. Welcome to my test facility. I require exo-fighters for a live combat test. You produced outstanding combat data in the previous war game. Keep crushing those efficacy metrics. of this incredible employee benefit. Ugh. <laughs> Tell me this is better than it looks, Chief. Come on, Madge. Who am I talking to? You can get us off this island anytime you want. Shit. Thank you. Now the truth. We're screwed. The Vortex pushed the jet control system to the red line. The turbine blades shattered from the stress on a port engine. Pieces of it bounced around, wrecked hell on the inside. And then the fuel line caught fire and melted the hydraulic system. So no damage beyond the port wing. That's not enough for you? The crash 
could have stressed or broken anything on the whole ship. Which means you and me are going to take apart and put back together everything on this bird until we are sure it is good to fly. Ah, fantastic. So glad I asked. Chief, there is no fixing this. Now who did you think you're talking to? This is me, Madge. Two weeks, three weeks tops. She's fixed. Two weeks? I can shave off four or five days if you don't mind crashing on liftoff and touchdown. What? It's the deadliest part. <laughs> you are wild men, Jif. Cindy, what is our water situation? With an atmospheric humidity at 85%, our hydration resources are well secured. And we've got rations and... and beer. A cooler full. We can do this. What? Well, I am not dying sober. <laughs> you sound like my grandmother. What is this? Are they burying that suit? Unclear. It's a deeply encrypted photo from an IBS worksite somewhere on Bikatoa. Timestamp is old. Well before the incident. Dating to the earliest days of exosuit development. Now. Ah, uh, you and your conspiracy theories. I go ahead, tell him. I know you're dying too. Now, as I was saying, this is Picatoa. Exosuits were developed here right from the start of the program. Clearly, some poor bloody test pilot took a hit to the chest, and they decided to bury the evidence. And then took an incriminating photo of it? Well, I don't know, but look at the thing. It's shredded. Sure, the frame looks buckled, but the hatch was still open. I am telling you, somebody died in there. And if so, why have we never heard about these deadly accidents in the exosuit development program? Hmm, I've seen exofighters get out of worse than that. No way. That's thoracic crush damage and a punctured lung at least. Listen when I tell you. I saw a girl fall off a six-story building, wrestling a triceratops on the way down. They hit the ground. Bam! Horn went through the chest. And I mean, through the chest. What happens? She takes hold of the horn, breaks it off, walks back to where I'm landing the carrier and says, Chief, mission complete. And then? Then she bled all over my hangar and spent a month in the ICU. Hm, Exo fighters. You do some crazy shit, but you get back up afterwards. This exo fighter, their black box was still functioning. And what? Was the data corrupted? Uh, no. No, it's just last words and, and all that. Uh, yes, very tender. Sandy, play the file. Commencing playback. It's not real! Holy shit, not I'd never heard. Yeah, I am glad we settled this in advance. I was about to click heels and say there's no place like house. It's home. It's Kansas, or simulation, better than this shitty fight club. I am not going to be picky. No, there's no place like... You know what? <sighs> never mind. <laughs> Me back foot. What you got now? On a scale of one to trouble, we're in trouble. In every war game, 
Ace really is getting pulled back three years into the past, back to 2040, right before the Stradivator fails. All the data we're pulling confirms it. Huh, you're a time traveler. And Ace isn't the only one. We've all fought dinosaurs before, but not like this. This is no random outbreak. Leviathan is intentionally summoning them as cannon fodder for the war game. It's frankly obsessed with pitting dinosaurs against exophytes. But why? And why repeat the same day over and over? I'm entertaining theories. There is one thing we know for sure. Play it. Yeah, I was just getting to that. We all kind of hoped this was all some sort of simulation. Not real. Occam's razor and all that. Well... Commencing playback. <laughs> I'm guessing he didn't fix that with a bandage and a lollipop. Yeah, until we know more, we have to assume that fighting is the only sure way to stay alive. We must find a way to reach the outside world. Magnum's the only friend we've got right now. And maybe if we keep sharing info, we can find a way out of this... Exofighters, prepare for dimensional, dimensional integration, integration in, in ten, ten minutes. minutes. We get it! <sighs> All right, Ace. Wish one of us could share the load, but... Try and stay alive, eh? Magnum got back alive and that. Not a white chick. Only just had to dope him up real good. I prefer the ones with the fangy mouth. <laughs> I thought the hit hunters were only a ghost story. I'm sorry, um, what? Hunters? Hit hunters! They catch you. They rip out your brains, them bypass and steal your combat data. Oh, oh, lovely. You best be careful, Ace. Your spine looks ripe for the plucking. You no, know, Magnum has a lot of pilots that we want. Oh, he's right. I mean, even Majesty likes the Aussie kid. I don't mind him. All of those Mag fans? Get together. You know what I mean? Oh. Oh. I'm with the main names. Oh dear. Sure you do, buddy. Exosuits, eh? A system so advanced, even the pilots need an upgrade. It's worth it. I could never go back to manual control systems. Only a direct neural link is fast enough for controlling an exosuit in combat. What was it like for you, huh? Getting your bypass put in. Oh, I had terrible headaches for a week. Like nails being hammered into the back of my head. It's a minor, barely invasive surgical procedure, they said. Yeah, right. Uh, I didn't get headaches. I just couldn't sleep on my back for a while. I wasn't used to that feeling of pressure, you know, inside your neck. Still, worth it. I would have gone through anything to become an exo-fighter. No, Ace, no, don't even start. We've all heard the story about how you woke up during the procedure. Look, don't get me wrong, it's a great story. You just tell it too much. So, uh, you're not going to get the oars removed? Ah, well, you know, I may not be an exo-fighter anymore, but I... I mean, I, I probably should. I don't know. This goddess. This Bikatoa. A am I crazy or does that look like an exosuit? It does. And look what she's fighting. What have we got ourselves into here? Okay, right. No more of that. I'm not doing that again. You're back already? W what do you mean, already? I've been out in that jungle for four bloody hours. Fluids I didn't sweat, the mosquitoes sucked out of me. I'm a husk. I have gaping hole in my rectus abdominis. Uh, Chief is doing a 300 point electrical checklist. Ace is being dragged through space time to fight dinosaurs. 
You want us to feel sorry about the walk in the woods? Yeah. All right, granted. Did you find anything we could use to get off this island? There's nothing left out there. Well, a bit. Look at this. What am I looking at? It's a picture of a fallen piece of the Stradivadis cable. It looked infested with these components. I was checking out the blast damage, wondering why the whole thing came down when I spotted them. I don't recognize this. What is it for? It beats me, but Bikato is sealed off from the outside world. Dinosaur breakouts across the globe. I get the feeling this is connected to it somehow. Working hard. Are you hungry or thirsty? Mm. Ah, my mouth is dry as a cat's asshole. But the water coming out of the condenser tastes like a gym sock, and I can't calibrate with a beer in me. Look on the bright side. At least we are alive. Yes, Andy. We're alive. We're survivors. Hmm, what do you think, Sandy? About living and dying? Please, rephrase the question. Let me tell you what I think. The thing about living is, there are two kinds of people. One kind goes out and makes the most of their lives. They get educated, work hard, try to change the world. Then one day, bam, they get hit by a car or get cancer, I don't know. The world kills those people as a lesson to the rest of us. The world doesn't want to be changed. <sighs> anyway, that lives the other kind of people. Us. The assholes who just get by. <sighs> Did I ever show you this? I do not recall having seen it. That's my little sister, Haruka. Half Japanese from when my old man remarried. <laughs> she was a great kid. Had an IBS career she actually liked, you know. Smart enough to figure her own life out. My little sis. She was that first kind of person. <laughs> and she might just have changed the world. Except I got this call from IBS HR one day. Are you the surviving relative of Haruka Lorenzo? <laughs> That's how I found out. Turns out she'd have been killed in one of the first dinosaur outbreaks. No exo fighters. Nobody to help her. Didn't even get to bring her body back. We buried a reef at sea. I think about her sometimes. I am sorry to hear that. Thank you, Sandy. Feels good to talk about it. What on the earth? Chief, it happened again! Oh, God damn it. Holders. Why is this suit moving? Suit? What? Emergency shutdown! Hell in Powder House! Sandy, what's happening? My initial analysis of the data intercepted in 2040 showed potential compatibility with the exosuit system. So I plugged it in. Naturally. It did prove compatible. That's good, but you know, maybe don't do that again. Sandy. What is this data? All exosuits are designed to periodically transmit data packets back to IBS during the war games. This is one of those packets. So it's, it's what? Control commands? The near field signal from pilot to suit? Negative. Original exosuits were designed with burst transmission capabilities from the onboard memory. The file in question appears to be a data block recorded from the brainstem bypass. That shouldn't be possible. H how is that possible? Suit control is an analog neural signal. One way from Ace's brain to the suit's body. What we're looking at is a digitally processed recording. Affirmative. I'm waiting for the problem here. I need to take a look at this. Hey, Ace, check this out. You know how exosuits were developed right here on the island? We're starting to find data recorded during the development process. Play it again, Sandy. 
Understood. <clears throat> okay, we are rolling. Sound? Check. Video? Do we have video? Check. No screw-ups, please. Anchor Division Exo Fighter Program. Combat Data Collection Test Number 12. Test Pilot, are you with us down there? All set, sir. Okay, uh, first we'll activate the Brainstem Bypass's transmission system. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> you wouldn't. It's a, it's a passive system. This test does have an active element, though. Okay, let's start firing at him. Bring up the 9 mil and give me a two-second burst. Scatter it. What the hell? You're doing great. Just uh, keep dodging. Is this safe? Didn't you tell him we were running a live fire test today? Sorry, sir. Well, <laughs> it's too late now. It's perfectly safe. They tell me that armor is very thick. Keep hitting him. Are you trying to kill me? That is great. The more data we get, the better. This is all helping to make a better exosuit. Oh, see how he dived away there? Split second thinking. That's the kind of instinct we can use. Any response from Leviathan? It's saying insufficient data. <sighs> that machine is never happy. Well, we can push our pilot a little harder. <laughs> Results ready. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Ace, I may have some bad news. Chief, what's wrong? Look, exosuits are piloted via the brainstem bypass, right? The neural link to the pilot. It pretty much means the suit is accepting data directly from your brain. I've been trying to figure out why the exosuit is storing and transmitting that data during the war games. Well, Look at this experiment they were doing with exosuits back before the incident. Okay, uh, first we'll activate the brainstem bypass's transmission system. Any response from Leviathan? And we checked out the exosuits, and it looks like Leviathan's implanted a data collection program into their firmware. Like, all of them. We never would have noticed it if it weren't for Sandy's little... experiment. Sandy. That is his way of saying, well done. I am pleased to be of assistance. What does Leviathan need exosuit data for? Is it tracking Ace's location and vitals? No. No, what Sandy intercepted is much more complex than that. You see, this component in the exosuit spine, the memory buffer, is saving your neural signals. Ace, it's gradually building up a data file. And it is a lot of data. I've confirmed it, Ace. Leviathan's collecting your reactions to heat, explosions, oncoming dinosaurs, the way you respond to every combat scenario, and maybe even more than that. Listen again to the audio from Anchor Division. Combat data collection test number 12. Split-second thinking. That's the kind of instinct we can use. If Leviathan's building a database of exo-fighter responses, all your combat instincts, then by the time we've learned how to destroy it... He could already know everything about you. Chief, you must disable this. Make it stop transmitting. I can't. Not without unlacing the entire neural wheel that drives the control system. Like it or not, the exosuit's keeping Ace alive out there. But the more we use it, the more it helps Leviathan. Magnum, you must rest now. You're torn up worse than I am. Ace, talk some sense into him. He has head of pig. Oh, come on. I can... Oh! <coughs> I can talk and heal at the same time. <sighs> Listen, Hawkeyes. I know you're thinking it. You want to take down one of those watchers, don't you? Chuck a little high explosive into Leviathan's eyes and ears, drops a good one, and we all go home. 
There was one crew that tried it, and I saw the pieces after Leviathan is done with them. That AI does not take kindly to destruction of IBS property. If we're going to strike at Leviathan, it has to be the core, and that's someplace up the Stratovator. How the hell are we going to get up a space elevator when we can't even get this carrier off the ground? I've found something, something that might just help. If I make any progress on it, I'll let you know. In the meantime, you've got to play nice with Leviathan until the time is right. <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> uh, you're not wrong there, Vic. This is the second time you call me this. Vic. You know me. In your timeline. You might notice that me and Lorenzo are a little understaffed over here. Not everyone made it in our crash. You mean? If it's any consolation, you didn't suffer. It is not consolation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Magnum, do not speak as if I... That thing that people say about you, it's bullshit. Don't believe it. What do people say about you, Victoria? It is not your business. Right. Well, uh, you lot, stay alive out there. Especially you, huh, Case? Hmm? Like I always say, sometimes the coin comes up heads. But sometimes not. Surely a Pacific Island is not the best place to put your space elevator. There is a reason for locating... Oh, wait, I know this one. Picatoa's near the equator. Makes it easier to build a cable going straight up to a geosynchronous orbit. Correct. I watched a documentary about it. I will add ten points to your score. Sandy, is he making you keep track of his petty victories? It is not a difficult task. He is often incorrect. Please push a notification to my console when the score changes. Now wait a minute. Confirmed. Hang on now. This facility at the bottom of the Stratovator, this is Anchor Division, yes? IBS's top flight research center. Points to you. I need no points. Exosuits were developed right here. For all we know, we've crash landed where they used to test them. Ah, oh, God, not again. Is there an emergency? Uh, no, no, Sandy's fine. I just forgot to charge the arm. This thing is as dead as a AAA in a nun's... Uh... No, well, never mind. Have you ever tried plugging a cable into your right elbow with your left hand? It... Allow me to assist. Oh, no, no, you don't have to. The cable is connected. Thanks. You know, there's a time when I would have hated that. I've always wanted people to know I don't need anybody's help. I've got my life sorted. Sorted right out. And my one room IBS bed sit is just a bump in the road. And then I lost the arm, and I just I just <sighs> right, right in the overdrive. I'm fine. I don't need help. Just stay away. I am an autonomous unit as well. No. No, you're not. You're part of this crew. You see. If you go on too long, thinking you can get by alone, pretending you're better than the other working stiffs so you don't have to do anything for them or, or them for you, and pretty soon you've only got yourself left to despise. It was Ace and Chief that set me straight, convinced me to pull my head out of my ass. They got me to stay after. If they hadn't been around, I... Getting burned alive will screw with your worldview. Oh, right, I, I never told you, did I? Yeah, well, um, the old arm wasn't cut off or broken or anything like that. A uh, Heisel tank, 
exploded in our hangar, and my suit caught fire with me inside it. No warning, just bang, and my ace was right there with me. The fuel lines in my arm were burning. The hatch control and emergency hatch bolt detonator both malfunctioned. The suit recorded everything, so I know I was conscious for 32 seconds before I blacked out. And Ace dragged me to the chem shower. Felt longer at the time. Ace got hit pretty bad in that blast as well. Spent a day in intensive care. You should see the scars. Anyway. We both figured there was nothing worse the Exo Fighter life could throw at us, so... Why not keep going? Ibis actually paid out a hazard bonus for that one. Of course, by accepting it, we waived our right to sue for damages. Way it goes, I guess. You really are messed up. God, Madge, this, someone should put a bell on you. This is a, a private conversation. Does a man get no privacy? We're living inside metal box. Everybody hears everybody, P. Don't get bashful on me now. Especially with such a badass story. Right. There, on the control platform. That's where Leviathan's core is. So, you're telling me this thing we must destroy could not be further away unless it was in space? <sighs> There's no good news without bad. My calculations confirm you are correct. Come on, Madge. Stay positive. Look at it this way. Yes. We'll likely starve to death long before we manage an attack on Leviathan. Just like my grandmother. Ah, well, well, well. We meet again, hard huh, case. <laughs> it must be doing pretty well for yourself if you're still alive. I imagine you might be getting a bit homesick at this point, eh? <laughs> but listen, this little reunion of ours has some major potential. I'm looking for some data. I mean, it's a bit slow going all by my lonesome. So how about this? I find the data, you stomp the dinos. Easy peasy. <laughs> this data's gonna help us tell the deranged AI a new one. Do not lose sight of your purpose in my war games. Complete the combat test in accordance with my instructions. Now, it's no secret that Leviathan's fact in the head. But that AI doesn't seem to take us very seriously as a threat. All the better for us, I say. Come on, let's head to the first data collection site. Alert. Unauthorized exo-fighter detected. Unsanctioned intervention during combat testing is not permitted. Initialize backup sequence. Security systems activated. Initiating mission overwrite. Time to turn up the heat. Victorious. Well done. It is my pleasure to analyze your data. I anticipate similarly effective results in future engagements. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> ah, you still alive? We're still breathing. How are you holding together? Unless a few parts of the red stuff, but there's plenty more where that came from. More importantly, who wants to go home? You found the way out? I reckon so. Though. Sending it to you now. This is what that crazy bastard that almost killed me was after. The headhunters? No, no, no. This was a particular one, okay? So, look, this daughter. 
Hey, Magnum! Sandy, run a diagnostic. Understood. Thank, thank you, Sandy. Who was that? Hey there! Squeako! Where's Magnum? Oh, hell no! Chief. Don't you do it! Chief. You rat crot! Murder! Leviathan isn't responsible for this. Sandy. Check the rest of that fire. Chief, he just... He's gone. But we're not cooked yet. The transmission was interrupted while we were downloading Magnum's data. These people got the crap end of the stick. Well, it's inevitable, isn't it? The price of progress. How do you say that in Bikatoan? How many times did he circle his rock before the crash? 104. I was being rhetorical. On every patrol we've flown around this island, I've never seen more than a wasteland. But there used to be people here. Culture. No one talks about that. Only Leviathan and his damn dinosaurs. You know, Chief, IBS has never officially revealed what caused the incident. But look at this. Here's the section of the Stradivator that blew up and caused the collapse. It's marked as a communications array, but there's obvious comms equipment on the upper section. I smell cover-up. Sandy, bring up that photo of the wreckage I found out in the jungle. Displaying. Compare it to an image of one of those vortexes showed up in the war games. Image comparison reveals a positive match. That's Vortexer technology. Massive, braided right into the Stradivator. Okay, 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 but what caused it to explode? Couldn't say, but there was some kind of energy pipeline running through the whole cable, all the way up here to Leviathan. So the question is, what was Leviathan doing with these vortexes? It all comes back to Leviathan. Hold on. Chief, you may be onto something there. And the war game gives us access to 2040, right? If we destroy Leviathan back then, Leviathan can't cause these vortexes to blow. We... We could prevent the whole thing. You really think we can be so precise as to destroy Leviathan without damaging the Stratovator? Hey, we're the Hammerheads. The name sings with precision. <laughs> I... You do know you're the only one who calls us that. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> ah, you're still alive. We're well, still breathing. How are you holding together? I lost a few parts of the Red Star, but there's plenty more where that came from. More importantly, who wants to go home? You found the way out? I reckon so, though. Sending it to you now. This is what that crazy bastard that almost killed me was after. The headhunters? No, no, no. This was a particular one, okay? So, uh, look, this data. Hey! Hey! Magnum! Sandy, run a diagnostic. Understood. Thank, thank you, Sandy. Who was that? Hey there! Squeako! Where's Magnum? Would, would it? Oh, hell no! Chief. Don't you do it! Chief. Oh. Chief. You rat crot! Leviathan isn't responsible for this. Sandy. 
check the rest of that fire. Chief, he just... He's gone. But we're not cooked yet. participate in a variety of exploratory combat scenarios I have prepared. You scored the most critical hits in the previous war game. Critical hits require finesse and skill, and benefit my research. Rate of key transfer preparation, 60% complete. Aerial transfer will be initiated soon. of the Magnum data is complete. Top shelf, Sandy. Now, what are we looking at here? The shell structure is incomplete. The content we were able to download was corrupted when Magnum's signal failed. Are we able to surmise what the corrupted data was supposed to be? One moment. The data was likely an executable file housing a complex hardware driver. A firmware update? Does this mean we're getting off this island or not? Sorry, Chief. At least not yet. Whatever Magnum wanted us to do with this data, we're gonna have to figure it out for ourselves. Look at this. These posters are all over the Exosuit Proving Grounds back in 2040. They were putting Leviathan in control of war games. Sound familiar? Development exercise? Or development of Exosuits. Facility control will be transferred to Leviathan. <laughs> they must have been out of their minds. Well, if they ran all these exercises, Leviathan must have been working fine. Till he wasn't. Hell, everyone in the outside world still thinks he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I saw an IBS ad for him the day we started this hitch. The question is, what was different about the day of the bigger toe incident? Alders, all I want to know is how we can destroy Leviathan and get out of here. Oh, sure. When I find the poster with that info on it, I'll let you know. Okay, Sandy, that's good. Just see if you can run it through another noise filter. Affirmative. What are you doing? We caught the end of a radio transmission a few war games back. Hard to make out. Must have been miles away. Okay, Sandy, play it back. Still got dinosaurs behind us. They're getting closer. Where's the rest of the squad? Don't worry about them. It's behind you! What? No! Turbin, wait! Ah! Oh, brilliant. More violent death screams. Those are so last week. Play it again. Uh, okay. Sandy? Where's the rest of the squad? Don't worry about them. It's behind you! What? No! Turbin, wait! Ah! You must be hearing something I'm not. I was listening for the emergency suit eject. Someone could have made it out alive. And? Not a chance. Sandy. Ready to assist? What do the others talk to you about? Whatever is on their minds, Victoria. I have nothing on my mind. <sighs> All right, one thing. You remember Magnum? Before he died, he mentioned the rumors about me. 
I remember. It is not my business. Uh, it's okay, Sandy. Listen. Exo fighters are superstitious. Any mission might end up with you beaten in half. Uh, you might come to believe many things. And the word around Exonet is that I am bad luck, okay? They say that if I am in your crew, bad things happen. Uh, and it is true that on my first jump, my teammate's jets failed and he broke both legs. And in Prague three weeks later, uh, a pteranodon came through the windshield and speared our chief like shish kebab. <sighs> Everywhere I go, I rack up the kills, I take down the dinos, and they say I am cursed. Don't tell Ace, but between you and me, I'm the best exo fighter in the fleet. My performance record is spotless, kill count the highest, TTK the lowest. I should be commanding a team, but no one wants to grow with me. And once you see a dinosaur shishkaboba man, it's hard to blame them. I never believe in bad luck, but <sighs> look at us. The week I get assigned here, we crash hard in the land that is before the time. And I can't do anything about it. <sighs> I can barely walk. As a digital construct, I am only capable of registering and reacting to the present moment, since bad luck involves anxiety over negative future events. It is a human concept that I find difficult to grasp. Huh. You never worry about what might happen in the future? I understand that I will have to handle it when it becomes the present. And if you can handle anything... Does your current crew think you are bad luck? I don't know. What did they say when they found out I was assigned to the team? I recorded several exchanges. But forget it, I don't want to know. It doesn't matter. Once we are off this island, I can get back on track. You will choose to leave the Hammerheads. Uh, has Lorenzo got you calling us that? If I have to, I have to. You must keep moving forward. That's what it takes to be the best. Similar to how Leviathan proceeds with the war games. What? Leviathan perpetuates these exercises in pursuit of an inchoate goal. Ha! Huh. Leviathan is a mindless machine. I apologize if I have said something wrong. Let us begin. Will I will transfer you to the combat zone. Have a super day. Skyward will provide combat support from above by debuffing enemies. Interdimensional transfer complete. The war game will begin shortly. Have a super day. You will now engage in a dinosaur combat test. Exo fighters, follow the watcher. Transmission interrupted. Initiating dinosaur call mission. Preparing combat area. Please wait. <laughs> Summon raptors. The enemy team has activated the dominance. Enemy control dinosaur. Prioritize its destruction. Summoning Tyrannus. this rest interval for maximum recuperation.
Okay, I have buried a hamster. I've buried a time capsule, but I have never buried a millionaire genius scientist before. Until today. That skeleton you found by Leviathan. That was Garrett's signs. Garrett's signs. IBS's top brain. This unrefined Rezor has pitted the receiver. <laughs> Lozor. Actually, well, Magnum. But may he booze, brawl, and barbecue in peace. He used to call that unrefined black stuff. Uh, those all. Called it those all. Mm. Match, do you want me to take a look at that? No. It is nothing. Bloody hell. I should look at that. Maniac AI aside, there are worse views than that. In my flat back home, I only had view of air shaft. You should see my place. I'd kill for view of air shaft. It is not competition, holders. Exo fighter called Durban is responsible for Magnum's death. Multiple armor piercing impacts to cranial and thoracic region. Fatality confirmed. Is that Exo fighter taking something from the. from the other one's body? W what is going on in this video? This is a perfect example of how dangerous this war game is. There are hundreds of exo fighters running around out there. Everyone's armed, and nobody knows what will happen next. One minute, they could be helping you. The next minute, they're shooting you in the back. Ace, listen. You can't trust anyone. Otherwise, you won't be prepared to defend yourself. <sighs> that is sociopathic. But, I mean, you know, I just want to make sure Ace comes out of this in one piece. Right? Madge? Come on, wasn't that weird? Sandy, show Chief what you found. Comparison of this audio transmission and camera footage have revealed a match. Still got dinosaurs behind us. They're getting closer. Where's the rest of the squad? Don't worry about them. Behind you! What? No! Durbin, wait! Durbin, wait! The Exo fighter responsible for Magnum's death has been partially identified. Alias. Durban. I have logged his exosuit model and markings and can identify it in combat. This Durban is out there stabbing his own teammates in the back. He killed Magnum. I'm going to find him in the war game. It's what Magnum deserves. Look, maybe you could beat him, even with that wound in your side. But then what? Magnum had a plan. He wanted us to have this data. It looks like Durban killed him for it. Odas, have you made any progress on that data? Sorry, Chief. The transmission got cut off too soon. So there's a way out of all of this. But Durban's the only one who knows what it is. There's something else. Before Magnum's signal cut out. That's a vortex. That must be how he got into Magnum's dimension. Could be. But look, watchers, he's controlling them. I don't know how he's doing this, but one thing's for sure. Durbin is not just another exo fighter. So what? He gets a free pass? He killed Magnum, and that means we are taking him out. The longer we wait, the harder that will be. 
Rome. We wait. We watch. We find out what he wants. When we know that, we pick the time. His Majesty, until you're healed, Ace takes the suit. That's just the way it is. Ugh. participate in a variety of exploratory combat scenarios I have prepared. You're on quite a streak lately. Continue performing at a high level and your extended existence authorization is all but greenlit. Enemy data key has progressed 90%. Consider directly attacking enemy exofighters. Roadblock can block attacks with its shield. Be sure to rest up and return to a combat ready state. So Garrett Sainz, he is big deal. He's basically the IBS godfather. He was responsible for the entire Exosuit project. He has anchored the vision. They are all smug jerks. Well, if so, he's the biggest smuggest, jerkiest one of all. Signs was the head of Anchor. He developed the first functional brainstem bypass and the artificial muscle fibers that revolutionized exosuit tech. That means he lived on the island. Right. And we found his skeleton. Oh, oh, what am I missing? But we didn't. Garrett Signs was one of the 413 survivors. He made it off the island. He did interviews, IBS launched a big PR cleanup after the Bikatoa incident. I mean, they kept signs in the public eye for years after. Then why are his dusty white bones in our front lawn? My question exactly. Voice match confirmed. Garrett signs. Your suspicions were correct, Alders. Hey, hey, guys! You've got to get in here. Sandy's found actual audio of Garrett's signs from before the incident. Let's check it out. I'm elbow deep in fuel manifold. So unless this dead researcher can help me evenly distribute combustion mixture, I'm busy. Madge, hold this cylinder. Oh, so this sounds boring. How will this be useful? I don't know, Madge. I haven't listened to it. Then you should do that. But at least Ace gets it. I mean, you get it, right, Ace? Oh, no? N no, nothing? You're just gonna... We're walking away. That's brilliant. But you know what? Forget it. Here. Sir, you, you can't just walk away. Dr. Sines, at least look at the data. Doctor, I'll make this quick. No, I'll make it quick. Yes, there's risk. This is cutting-edge science. There's always inherent risk involved when you're trying to do what's never been done. 
With all due respect, Dr. Science, this goes beyond inherent risk. These are just hypothetical numbers, and not a reason to shortstop an incredible leap in our technological evolution. The capabilities of our vortexers will be revolutionary. And the only system advanced enough to operate the Stratovator is Leviathan. Without Leviathan, there is no leap, Doctor. And I'm certain you're not suggesting we wait for one of our competitors to beat us to it. But the side effects, Dr. Science, the space-time distortions we're seeing. Every time Leviathan opens a vortex, distortion levels spike through the roof and bleed out into the surrounding space-time. Doctor, we're talking about the potential for catastrophic damage. Ibius would be responsible. Oh, these numbers are from obsolete vortexers. Once the new prototype is finished, these side effects will be a thing of the past. Our current equipment isn't capable of confirming that. The distortion could be profound. Enough. I'd like you to expand your perspective on this matter for just a moment. Our funding, your salary, all of it's contingent on the Vortexer project. Ibius has put considerable assets into Anchor Division to make this tech a reality. This Vortexer is the company's golden goose. There is no backing out. And there's no need. <laughs> Not when we have some of the most intelligent, responsible professionals like yourself in the Ibius family. Or am I wrong? Wait, you are still part of the Ibius family, aren't you? For the sake of due diligence, sir, at least read my report. Absolutely. Forward it to my office. Asshole. Why is it you are always making Cindy see these things, huh? What are you on about? Oh, big smart guy, never did you think about what it is like to be made of machine and spend all day studying mangled machine? A cruel confrontation of mortality. I appreciate your concern, Victoria. However, the more data I am given regarding damage sustained in battle, the more targeted and detailed the tactical assistance I offer Ace can become. In short, I improve with study. <laughs> Too bad Ace can't say the same. Ah, uh, Sandy? I am ready to assist. Good, good, good. Because there is something I need your help with. You see this screwdriver anywhere else on the ship. I need you to move it from that location, back to my desk, right here. Right here is where it belongs. Happy to help. I will inform the rest of the crew of this new directive. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, we don't need to tell anyone else about this. It is important the crew are made aware. There is a protocol for this screwdriver. It is important they are updated. But is it... is it... I mean, I think we can keep this between you and I. Inquiry. There are 11 screwdrivers and one adjustable wrench currently available on the carrier. Why does this screwdriver hold special significance? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, look, Sandy, um... This is not your average screwdriver. It's... The best screwdriver. Perfect balance with a reassuring weight when gripped, and it's never chewed a single screw head ever. How many screwdrivers can say that? Sandy, you use a tool like this screwdriver day in and day out sometimes. It is the only tool you know you can trust. It stops being just metal and rubber. It's more than that. Do you understand, Sandy? This screwdriver has a... soul. This screwdriver has a soul. And that soul, Sandy, that soul cries out. It cries. I want to help orders drive us some bloody screws. And this is why it belongs right there on your desk. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and that is also why we must keep an eye on Ace. Sticky fingers, that one, if you know what I mean. I will post a written reminder of workplace hygiene standards. No, 
don't... Well, actually, yeah, why not? I have located an Anchor Division accident report. Not a report of the bigger tow incident, surely. We found that data during the war game. You are correct. This report documents an earlier Vortexer incident with an Anchor Division. Earlier? Ace? Ace, look at this! Well done, Sandy. My pleasure. Sandy, pull up the report, please. This report is dated months before the Picatoa incident. Apparently, Anchor Division was warned about the issues with the Leviathan, but, surprise, surprise, they went ahead with the project anyway. Let me guess. IBS was threatening not to sign the Division's chicks. Bingo. Now listen to this. Our funding, your salary, all of it's contingent on the Vortexer project. This Vortexer is the company's Golden Goose. They actually named it Golden Goose. Morons. It does suggest a lack of imagination. So what sets this goose apart from the standard Vortexer? Besides, was risking everything on it. Look at his note. If GG had been completed, this incident could never have occurred. Cindy, will you play back that part about the distortion levels? But the side effects, Dr. Sines, the space-time distortions we're seeing. Every time Leviathan opens a vortex, distortion levels spike through the roof and bleed out into the surrounding space-time. Hmm. Space-time distortions. Mm, there's still puking out dinosaurs all over the planet. Bollocks. This doesn't add up. If this golden goose was so safe, how do we end up with velociraptors at Wimbledon? This researcher knew there was a problem, and whoever she was, it looks like she caused this smaller accident to prove it. We should find out more about her. Alders, our goal is to get off this island. There is no time for curious goose chase. Just some peace. Hey, if you two flap your arms as fast as your lips, you can fly us all out of here. Right, sorry, Chief. Madge, you won't. Planning on staying with Ibius when this is over? I mean, are you? Match, I mean, I mean, this is pretty incriminating stuff. I have worked too hard to get where I am. I'm an exo fighter. What else can I do? Artificial Intelligence Leviathan. I require all Exo Fighters to participate in the combat tests. This is a two-team competitive scenario. Those on the other side are the enemy team. The first team to complete all of the assigned objectives wins. The winning team will be eligible for bonus existence. Data indicates that human beings improve their performance through competition. Compete to win and compete to live. Compete to achieve research excellence.
transfer preparation 16% complete. Aerial transfer will be initiated soon. This won't be the best try. Combat test complete. You completed all objectives before the enemy team. Your team is victorious. Repeat, you are victorious. Lots of sensitive equipment in here, some of it between my bloody ears. Holders, be careful. We're in danger. Chief, would you mind telling them to put the gun down, please? Put down the gun, um, Majesty. Thank you, Chief, for that match. Just relax. Victoria, you are in danger. Oh, dear. Hello? It is this thing. Got to learn to calm down. Hello? Hello? I'm staying on this frequency. Patience is one of my few virtues. Hello? Oldest, Ace, up front. In here. Let Majesty sleep. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Ha <laughs> ha! At last! You had me doubting my sanity for a second there. Oh, but here you are, my fellow survivors. And unless I miss my mark, you have an exofighter. I knew it. Gentlemen, we are getting out of here. Now just slow your roll. Your signs, the Garrett signs. Ah, I see my reputation precedes me. Or wait, is there another one of me already working with you? Uh, you could say that. Oh, come on. Out with it. You found one of me? Hmm? Hmm? Well, in a manner of speaking. What? My corpse? Figures. Leviathan doesn't have a history of acting kindly towards anyone trying to shut down its core servers. You can shut down Leviathan? Oh. Wonderful. Smashing. Well, depending on who you ask. Tell you one thing, boys. Hearing about a dead version of myself makes me feel so alive. <laughs> so alive I can sing. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Doctor, before we start choir practice, how do we shut Leviathan down? Of course. Of course. You see, we couldn't do it from the outside. I had to break a few rules myself to get back on the island. And it appears I may have gotten myself stuck here. I know, I know, lay down the dogs. But that's where you come in, friends. <laughs> Doctor, I was under the impression you built Leviathan, which means you're the one responsible for this shit show. And now you want our help? The, the, the court of inquiry cleared me and my staff of any wrongdoing. So before you burn me at the stake, Brother, keep in mind I came back to the Katoa of my own volition. I want to make this right, but I need your help. All right, I'm listening. I need exosuits. It's our only shot. We need access to the past. We're talking about Ace in the war games. I'm waiting to hear what's in it for us. All my R&D is just waiting to be picked up back in 2040. Intact and hot off the presses. In this time period, it's all just so much paste thanks to the Stratovator collapse. But back there, <laughs> going out of business sale. Hmm? The access codes to override Leviathan. You can shut it down. The whole thing. And if we have our own plan to deal with Leviathan? Well, I think this plan is going to involve your kind of work, provided you're up for the action. Talking tish, a tongue, man. Ace is the best there is. 
Well, she works here too. Fine. Then here's the deal. You know, anchor division, I assume. Mm -hmm. My pride and joy. <laughs> the beating heart of Vigatoa. Boys, I'm giving you my personal permission to hack Anchor's network for any and all data tied to Leviathan. A day late and a dollar short there, old man. Hush up. Okay, let's see. Let us see. Ah, <laughs> all Anchor project files have serial numbers. Look for anything starting with 181. That's the project code for Leviathan's core. 181, gentlemen, sing it back to me. Got it. Our new lucky number. Okay, Doc. We'll see what we can do. Oh, uh, gentlemen, I didn't get your names. Call us the Hammerheads. Hey, now, look at you. Why, Quan, old friend. The Mark I did I suit. One of the original prototypes. Huh. Looks not very useful against T-Rex. Well, it must be from the original war game. DevX. It was running when the dinosaur outbreak overwhelmed the island. Gliders didn't stand a chance. The prototypes only shoot rubber bullets. What a shit show. Rest in peace, brethren and sistren. Be free. What is that? Sandy found it on the Anchor Division servers. One of the researchers spread it around all the Leviathan-related stuff. There's audio as well. Check this out. I'm sharing this with everybody who has level 3 access and above. This is the image Dr. Science put in the staff notification about last week's lab incident. Supposedly, it's the last thing the lab camera shot before they lost signal. According to Dr. Science, there was an electrical fire. My analysis shows this photo is fake. It's been altered. Ugh. A few of us saw what really happened in that lab when Leviathan took control. I've been concerned about the gradual build of space-time distortions for a while now. But this was something else. I saw... I saw dinosaurs in that lab before the fire destroyed everything. Somebody in our chain of command isn't just ignoring the hazards of Vortex or Tech, they're actively covering it up to avoid delaying the Stratovator's grand opening. Dr. Science claims that Golden Goose is foolproof. That this accident is the result of a misfire by an unfinished prototype. If that were true, why manipulate the evidence? Somebody... Somebody needs to do something. We... I can't just... I can't just stand by and let this happen. Right there. Look, the serial number. Lucky 181. I mean, this is it. Some of the data signs talked about. We're going to do this. We're actually going to shut down Leviathan. It's, um, component? It is. What's around the machine part got to do with shutting Leviathan down? Well, obviously, Signs wants to exploit some weak point in Leviathan's hardware. This must be part of it. He said he needed access codes. This looks like some kind of drive shaft. And I feel like I've seen this design somewhere before. Great! So, what are we going to do with it? Tell signs we got something. We'll see how he reacts. Hold on, Doctor. Sandy, bring up that first 181 schematic. Oh, this... Oh, this is fantastic. This is better than I could have dreamed. The file is completely intact. Bring me more files like this one, and I can rebuild the entire data set. And that'll help us get rid of Leviathan, right? What? Yes, yes. But do you see what this proves? The war game really does give us access to all my Anchor Division records from 2040. For a second, I really thought they were gone, but... Oh. Focus, Doc. What's the next step? Next step? Well, well, you keep going. Keep it up. More 181 files? There should be six in total. 
The more you retrieve, the closer we get to accessing Leviathan and shutting him down for good. It, Doctor. Not him. It's just a malfunctioning machine. Yeah, of course. Of course. Right you are. One last thing to drop in your calculus. If you take Leviathan out of the picture and clear up the worst PR disaster in history, Ibis is liable to be very, very happy with you, right? I mean, I know what you exo crews earn. A little uh, financial incentive wouldn't go amiss, am I right? Thanks for your concern. You deserve it, my friend. Keep hunting. It's like Christmas morning. Don't worry, Science. We'll be in touch. <laughs> Something's amiss here. No mistake. Exo fighters, welcome to the war game. This is a high level combat test. You will generate high level data. Demanding metrics bring out our best. This will be pleasant. Leviathan's constructions. It's just a slice of the larger dimension. Sad about Magnum. Dreadful, dreadful stuff. Such a shame to let go of useful personnel. But business is business, and his data was choice. So, step right up. I'll find a use for each of you. Though I should see if you're even worth the effort. Leviathan. Execute. Access code confirmed. Standby cancelled. Executing command. Adjusting Exo Fighter survival rate to lowest allowable levels. Initiating extreme combat test. The name's Durbin. Charm, I'm sure. Let's see if you have a chance to remember it. Secret robot handshake. Good morning, Victoria. Oh, see? At least someone knows my real name. Hey, Majesty, sit down. You had a hell of a fever cooking. 
Okay, brethren and sisters, how many people thought Dr. Sines was on the level? Okay. Ocular microexpressions suggest a ruse, double cross, or bamboozle. I agree. But if you went through all that trouble to ask us for some data, that data is worth checking out. This is a trap. Where's my gun? Okay, you can have that back when you are not hypovolemic, angry, or paranoid. I will aim for two out of three. Six files with the prefix 181 may be relevant to stopping Leviathan. I guess you might want to hold off sending a resume to Anchor Division. Speak up about Leviathan and you're fired. Maybe she got off the island. Happy ending. One of the 413. Imagine, you're on that last boat. Last ones to make it before the tsunami. I mean, the, the guilt. Me? I would feel lucky. You? Wow. All right. What? Well, that is lucky brick. Sandy, now they see if you can filter out some of that noise. I can't hear signs. Processing now. Did you find something? Well, we think so, but it's a phone call, and all the important bits are in the background. It's a bit hard to make out. I have filtered the audio and equalized the voice levels. Okay, great. This call came out of Anchor Division right at the beginning of the incident. Go for it, Sandy. Hello. You have reached the obvious emergency response hotline. Hello? We need help. Your call is being recorded. Please hang up and try again That screwdriver it is the best screwdriver chief i am returning it to its proper place here on alder's desk okay uh why i'm sorry chief my confidentiality was requested and confirmed sandy i'd like you to help me with something i am always ready to assist chief please examine the cockpit for three seconds for me certainly Good, good. All right, then. Thank you, Sandy. Chief, the best screwdriver is missing. Listen, you got to understand we live in a changing world. Nothing is constant. Cling to an object for too long. A screwdriver, for instance. The next thing you know, the world's leaving you behind. I did not realize the consequences would be so severe. What I'm trying to say is, embrace the bigger perspective. Take change as it comes. That is the path to happiness and fulfillment. Understand? I have made a recording for further analysis. Good. 
because I need you to play that back for Olders when he asks how I got the best screwdriver. Talk about a blast from the past. What is it? A news report from right before the incident. Listen to this. Thousands of enthusiasts have gathered on Vicatoa Island for the grand opening of IBS Corp's Golden Goose, the Stradivator. This massive engineering project by the global technology leader will be humanity's first functional space elevator and one of the largest structures ever built. Our crew on the ground spoke with some of the people camped out waiting for the big day. August 16th. What brought you to Vicatoa? Well, it's just this incredible leap forward, and I wanted to be part of it. We're working in space in my lifetime, you know? I, I can't wrap my head around it, dude. IBS is killing it, man, like killing it. Nailed it. Built a space elevator. Woohoo! Clearly, there's a lot of excitement. Rumors abound that IBS plans to unveil a revolutionary new fuel responsible for powering the Stradivator as part of the opening ceremony. We'll have more for you tomorrow morning, live, as the ribbon is cut. Remember that feeling? How hopeful people used to be about this thing. And if we actually stop it from falling, I mean, people could... They could feel this way again. First things first, we stay alive. Walk before you can run. Noah Island for the grand opening of IBS Corp's Golden Goose, the Stradivator. Oh, waiting for the big day, August 16th. August 16th. August 16th. Sandy, bring up that poster we found. Display. He lines up. It... Hey, Ace, Madge, check this out. Exo Fighters, your next dimensional integration is scheduled for 1430 hours. Ugh, again? Ace just went out this morning. Oh, I don't think again covers it, Madge. I mean, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, look here. Now, I think Leviathan's been running this war game non-stop ever since the day of the Picatoa incident. Uh, non-stop? You mean for us, it's been a few times a day, but... But Leviathan's always repeating August 16th, 2040, like a broken record. See, it's right here. On August 16th, the same day as the Picatoa incident, Leviathan was running this DevX war game to test IBS's prototype exosuits. Now, listen to this again. It was recorded when the Picatoa incident was happening. There, there, that signs realizing something was very wrong with Leviathan. And this happened the same day as the grand opening of the Stratovator? That's right. On one side of the island, Leviathan takes control of the Stratovator. Over on the other side, it's been given control of this DevX exosuit war game. So you've got a hyper-advanced AI trying to run a war game? Then you suddenly give it control of dinosaur summoning vortex attack. The device is built into the Stratovator cable. Exactly. So I'd wager that Leviathan wasn't satisfied with suit-on-suit -suit combat tests. So it used the Stratovator to up the ante. Exosuits versus dinosaurs? Now there's a fight. It's an awful lot of creative thinking for a glorified smartphone. Ain't hey, not wrong there. But nevertheless, suits versus lizards. That's the moment it all went wrong. How could the IBS let this happen? The more I look into this, the more I think the entire thing could have been avoided if Signs wasn't so obsessed with this Golden Goose project. I mean, just listen to this. All the Golden Goose I gave up in that lab. Everything was worked for. It's going to destroy unless we do something. I take your point. People dying. And that's all he could think of. Signs might help us get off this island. But the Chief's right. He can't be trusted. Authorized eyes only. <laughs> Safety information was on a need-to-know basis in Anchor Division, surprising 
no one. Lose all threshold. Toxic effects on organic tissue. They hid the fact this crack poisons anything it touches it. Jeez, a piece. Glad I wore gloves last time I cleaned off the damn suit. But Neosaur, I mean, look at this. It's a walking glob of the stuff. Ace, you seen the shit in action? Lozor shall be stored in a tank or in a container that complies with paragraph D2 of this section. It's combustible. One wrong move in storage and Lozor turns into a bomb. Son of a bitch. You're thinking of the explosion that cost me my arm. It comes to mind. Huh. Health and safety would have a field day with this. Thank you for attempting to access the Leviathan facility control system. Your access privileges have been temporarily rescinded. Please submit to an administrator at your earliest convenience. Alders, enough already! You've been listening to that lippy lippy Leviathan since the damn sun came up. Mercy, brother. Give it a break. Oh, chief. <sighs> How long have you been listening? Since the damn sun came up. You've been yammering at it at the top of volume all morning. Oh, no, I, I'm not. I, I mean, I'm not talking to you. Then put on some headphones and jam in respectful silence. Please. N no, Chief. This is one of the Leviathan voice messages Sandy flagged. I know. I heard. At 4 a.m. I know, Chief, but wait. Before Bikitoa happened, Leviathan sent out thousands of messages daily. Most of them just routine staff inquiries. But this one's different. It's got additional data encoded in the audio. Leviathan's voice was a carrier signal. Chief, the message was not the message. Someone at Anchor encoded a hidden message in this frequency. I've translated it. Listen, I know what you did in the lab. There was no accident. You're going to lose your job in the next three days. Find me through, Leviathan. I mean, what the hell was going on over there? Olders, you're not wrong. But it's Monday morning. It's Wednesday, Chief. It is Sunday morning. <sighs> I'm going back to bed. Olders, your lucky number came up. 181. Happy day. Happy day, indeed. Uh, interesting. Now, this looks like a stabilizer rig. And the secrets of the Golden Goose continue to unfold. I will add the schematic to the investigation file. Thanks, Sandy. Sandy? Sandy, do you smell that? I was not designed with olfactory sensors. Right. Whoa! Chief! Ah! Chief, whatever you're doing down there, it's starting a fire! Then put it out! I have extinguished the fire. Is there anything else? <coughs> Olders, <coughs> stay right there. Why? <coughs> I need to do that again to figure out what went wrong. This carrier reminds me of my grandmother. It was always question whether she wanted us to live or die. Uh, really? What's this? Uh, it looks like it was taken from an exosuit. No, I think it's a marketing or publicity image. The tactical display is consistent with the exosuit functionality. Sure, but look at the skyline. Here, multiple Stradivators. It has to be some kind of marketing material. No, well, there's nothing here to help us. You see the time code? 24th century. I mean, please. Ibius was going to build more of them? Until their first one destroyed an entire island? Yeah, looks like it. Haruka Lorenzo. Sunday main screen. Chief? 
When exactly did you say your sister passed? Three years ago, one of the first outbreaks. Never found out more than that. You know how the Chief network Haruka was. Chief Lorenzo. She is alive. On the island. In the past. Chief? Chief Lorenzo! Sandy, come on! Go away! Get from me now! Oh dear. Let me think. Let me think. I'll just pick this up. Oh. Okay, Sunday. You know the drill. Full articulation refit. I hope that was not a mistake. Are you joking? This is surreal. Come Ace, on. are you using time travel to cheat? Look, look at me, be honest. We can save her. Arakos alive. Back then, in the war game, we can save her. That's easier said than done, Chief. Don't give me that it's impossible shit. Dinosaurs should be impossible, but they turn up in my goddamn breakfast cereal. This is my sister. There's got to be a way. Excuse me, Elders. If you were starting a new game, could you deal me a hand? Santa, you told a joke. A joke often employs a double meaning. The comparison of my manipulator to a hand of cards. Also, Ace is cheating. I knew it. You monster. I can't believe it. This you. whole time. Wow. For shame. <sighs> you should be ashamed. Give it back. All of it. I know how much it is. Haruka is alive during the war game in 2040. Yikes. Listen to this. A nice little chat with IBS Information Security. Somebody in 2040 got themselves tangled up with InfoSec? Oh, I hope they had a new job lined up. And a new asshole. I want you to know, I am sorry it had to come to this. Just answer their questions and this will all be over soon. Thank you, Dr. Sines. We'll take it from here. So... Employee number 017618. That's me. I have a name. You like working here at Anchor Division? Enjoy your job? Will you drop the routine and tell me what's going on? Your recent actions have negatively impacted operations at Anchor Division. <laughs> I've done nothing that violates the professional conduct guide. These actions have raised questions about your information security. My memorandi were filed according to IBS safety protocols, okay? You're being placed on administrative leave. Ah, there it is. But before you go, we need to be sure you haven't abused your access to Anchor Division information. I know better than anyone what happens to leakers. Excellent. Then this will be very simple. Will you allow IBS officers to accompany you to your apartment to confiscate your personal information devices for inspection? Absolutely not! In that case, it is my duty to inform you that effective immediately, your IBS passport has been rescinded. What? Pending a full inquiry. <laughs> well, how am I supposed to leave the island? That's really not my problem. The 
this anchor division researcher. The one who got fired trying to warn people about Leviathan. We have her employee ID, yes? Affirmative. So, employee number 017618. That's me. I have a name. The voice. Is this the same person who confronted signs in the earlier recordings? They're actively covering it up. For the sake of due diligence, sir, at least read my report. The voice print is an exact match. She worked by the book. Tried to warn signs. He did not listen. So she took matters into her own hands. I like this person. The consequences were more extreme than she anticipated. Explain. The researcher claimed that this lab footage was altered to obscure the truth of the incident. I believe I have located the unaltered file. Holy shit. All her warnings came true, and they terminated her. Anchor Division records show that the same employee ID was the intended recipient of the hidden text message we located. That find me through Leviathan nonsense, display it. Yannick Nadi. Whoever he was, he thought she could help. We need to know more. Have we located Anchor Division personnel records? A copy of Anchor Division personnel records is available. Search for her ID. Searching 017618. Match detected. What? But that's... Mother of God. Artificial Intelligence Leviathan. I require all Exo Fighters to participate in the combat tests. This is a two-team competitive scenario. Those on the other side are the enemy team. The first team to complete all of the assigned objectives wins. The winning team will be eligible for bonus existence. Data indicates that human beings improve their performance through competition. Compete to win and compete to live. Compete to achieve research excellence. that you are staring at the screwdriver. It's been 10 minutes. I am reviewing the algorithm used in my ethics subroutines. I am unsure if it is best to relocate the screwdriver. Ah, so this is the infamous best screwdriver. Affirmative. Sandy, it is only screwdriver, okay? <laughs> See? That was very decisive. Problem solved. Now anyone can use any of the other ten screwdrivers on board, hmm? Game over. Inquiry. Will one of the other screwdrivers become the new best screwdriver? <sighs> Only if there is no god. And if there is a new best screwdriver, is there protocol for the previous best screwdriver? There is nothing special about that screwdriver, Sandy. It's how you use a screwdriver. Any screwdriver that makes it special. Very simple. So there is nothing special about the older tools. All tools are replaceable. Keep a tool, throw a tool away. Only rule is, don't act like a tool. Hmm? I understand. What should I tell Alders about the old best screwdriver? What about the screwdriver? Wh where's the best screwdriver? Madge? Sandy? I am leaving now. But, so... Wait a minute. All this time, 
Heisel is a side effect of time travel? They just juice it out of dead dinosaurs? Not just the dinosaurs. We've been running exosuits on Heisel for three years or more, and there's no shortage. Uh, don't be so sure. IBS makes me account for every drop of Heisel we bring on board. At least we know why dinosaurs bleed black. Lozol. Unrefined Lozol in the blood. After outbreaks, IBS cleanup crews are always Johnny on his spot. Have you noticed how quick they haul off carcasses? Huh? I should have known. If they weren't up to something, they'd outsource that job like they do all the other dirty ones. But the whole economy is running on... what, dinosaur blood fuel? Oh, I wish I found that harder to believe. You should have told us everything, Signs. Origin suit, the Vortex generator tick. Those are corporate secrets, my friend. <laughs> okay, Doc. You keep on living life the IBS way. The Golden Goose data stays with us. Golden oh, hey, no, no. <laughs> wait, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Wait for what, Dr. Okay, Sainz? Okay, wait, no, stop. It's high level. When the island was destroyed, we lost the technology for the production of Heizal. Golden Goose is the kind of thing that changes the world, baby. Which is why I hope you'll forgive me for this. memory core. I can try to restore her from backup, but she can't do it. Majesty. Thank you for choosing your IB-BOS Tactical Assistance AI. Cindy? She's gone. Funny, isn't it? The Bikatoa Islanders had this whole culture, and now all that's left of it is this pile of stones. Look around you. IBS left their own piles of stones, too. And Leviathan. And Leviathan. Loading next file. One second, Sandy. Could you rewind that last audio? You know, Sandy, the more I hear this man's voice, the less I like him. What are you not telling me, Signs? Commencing audio playback. <laughs> okay. Uh, are we uh, recording? Good morning. Good morning. And what a beautiful morning it is. What? 5.30? Good lord. Okay, quick memo then. I'm going to be informing the section leaders of my little breakthrough in Vortexer Tech today. As such, we'll be diverting half of the Anchor Research staff to a new project. Designation 181. We'll begin prototyping immediately. This device for the Stratovator is going to be the goose that laid the golden egg for us. Oh, that's good. I'll use that. Make that the project header, Golden Goose. Send out a meeting invitation. Top priority. 
We'll do a full briefing at 11 today, and make a note to have them bring the staff rosters and schedules. This is going to make us all very, mm, very rich. Anchor Division records indicate that vortexes were being used to summon dinosaurs as far back as 2032, eight years before the Bikatoa incident. They kept it secret all that time. I, I just can't believe these vortexers were made for transporting dinosaurs to the present for Heisel. There must be something we're missing here. Yeah, and its name is Golden Goose. The device in Haruka's lab accident had the same code name. She was trying to prove it caused uncontrolled space-time distortion, that's all. But with Leviathan at the wheel, they suddenly had a full-on dinosaur outbreak in their lab. And even then, Anchor Division covered it up. Look at these two photos. If no one knows about the dangers of Golden Goose, the project stays funded. They were never going to put this R&D on hold. Of course they weren't. They were looking at the total monopoly on Heizo. The fuel of the future. 700 miles to the galaxy. That's the bottom line. IBS's dreams were coming true right here on Bikatoa Island. And that brings us back to science. Designation 181. The goose that laid the golden egg for us. You were right, Chief. And Sandy. These 181 files signs has us searching for. They're not Leviathan components. Project 181 is Golden Goose. This must have been the new vortex that he was working on, and he expected us to get it back for him. Sandy, play back that part about the Stratovator. We'll begin prototyping immediately. This device for the Stratovator is going to be... And Signs acted like he didn't know why the Stratovator came down. It's this! There's something about this Golden Goose technology that he wants very badly indeed. Despite its track record of space-time distortion and lozol covered monster dinosaurs. Victoria, did you think I was a dinosaur when you shot me? What kind of question is that? Well, I think an apology is in order, personally. I'm not apologizing to him. I am much smaller than a dinosaur. Okay, fine. I'm sorry, Sandy. There you go. Thank you, Victoria. I will try to appear less dinosaur-like in the future. <laughs> you know, you're a really passive-aggressive android. This is starting to feel pointless. I find this is true of most things. What are we talking about today? Every time we learn something about this island, the whole story makes less and less sense. Wait, look at this. Anchor Division bends over backwards to clean up this corrupted data. But for what? It's an exosuit fighting raptors. How is that even possible? Exo fighters didn't start fighting dinosaurs until the Picatoa incident. How am I supposed to find something useful to save us when everything I find contradicts itself? Alders. What? Come with me. You are acting weird. We have beer and fine tree to climb. This will be good for your mind. <sighs> I suppose it couldn't hurt. Oh, this isn't going to turn into you telling me more terrifying stories about your grandmother, is it? I make no promises. Oh, there's something about sailing that stirs the blood, Chief. Setting off across the blue horizon. Sailing away from it all. Off to experience the purest form of being with nature. A voyage into the unknown. Just a man. One with his ship. The sea. A journey that rewards all his focus and effort. Alders, man. Are you getting misty-eyed about being stuck on a ship day in and day out? Gazing out at the South Pacific, isolated from the rest of the world with no idea when you'll see it again? Well, congratulations! You're living a dream. Ace, good evening. Please speak softly. Alders is currently resting. You may be pleased to know I have recovered the first best screwdriver. Alders insisted it be recovered. 
I found it located 320 meters west in a canopy of Passiflora edulis. Alders does not believe in replacing the first best screwdriver with the next. Chief Lorenzo believes objects such as the first best screwdriver hold one back in a changing world. But perhaps this is not the case when the object can change with the world. Ace? Sleep well, Ace. Ah, Thoris brochure. Very useful for escaping insane computer. Anything can provide a clue. A good investigator uses all his resources. How many affordable three-star hotels have you found? You'll eat those words when this ends up saving our lives. When you finish reading advertisement for already dead dinosaurs, maybe you can find some time to help with the live ones. Majesty, I have to say, your near-death experience has not improved your people skills. Less love talk, more war games. <laughs> I have detected a minor anomaly in photographs of Bikatoa Island. A minor anomaly? Uh, let's not get carried away. Okay, Sandy? This structure appears in the background of multiple images. Looks normal enough to me. Affirmative. However, the angle and distance indicate that these images were taken from the same location. Wait, wait, hold up. This is where they were digging up fossils. It says right there. Crustaceous period fossil layer. Are you sure the location's the same? Affirmative. That's not all. Remember that image of a damaged suit? We thought Anchor Division was burying it. This crack in the chest is an exact match. Same suit. Origin suit. I think it must be origin colon suit. Like the origin of this image is a suit. Don't be foolish. Look here. Origin suit, Anchor Division Reference Exhibit Alpha 1175. They were researching this origin suit. We, we saw it at the fossil dig site. Here in Powderhouse, they want dope on a wreck suit. They were digging one up. You're saying Ibias found a suit in the ground that had been buried for millions of years? Sandy, can you identify this building in the background? City planning records indicate the building was owned by Tuvao Power. Ibius records indicate the building was demolished in 2023 in preparation for the construction of the Stratovator. Before the Exosuit program even started, those dirty background. They didn't invent the Exosuits, they found one. All Anchor did was reverse engineer it. Look at the back of it. Tell me that's not a Vortexer. They dug up suit equipped with Vortexer? How the hell did an exosuit end up in the Mesozoic era? Before Vortexers were invented? <sighs> because of stupid time travel. There is no before. No wonder science is obsessed with this tech. He tried to trick us into hacking into his own research when he couldn't. Heizo, the Vortexers, the exofighters, these Gordon Goose. IBS's great evolutionary leap came from the past, and the company's entire future rests on keeping the secret. And I gave that man a decent burial. I'm of a mind to go out there and dig him right back up. Let's do one better. Let's give him a call. Ha <laughs> Yes! I knew it! I knew I had it somewhere! Ace! Ace, look, look, this, this is what Sandy's memory core looks like. Okay, okay, this is what you need to find. Alders, we all miss Sandy, but she's gone, Alders. I am sorry, she's gone. No, 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 it's, I mean, not necessarily. Her user interface, her, 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 her personality is designed to be merged with other units. Look, remember how we're supposed to merge Sandy with the HQ network after every mission? Sure, but we never do because it's stupid rule and we keep Sandy our own way. Yes, exactly! Now, that's what's got me thinking. If we can find old Sandy's memory core and bring it back, we might be able to integrate her memory with this new Sandy. Hello. Alders. Alders! There are thousands of exofighters out there. Think about it. 
How will we find science and that piece of shit Thurban now that they have what they want? No! That's just it, Madge. They don't have what they want. The Golden Goose data on Sandy's core was incomplete. She only had two of the data packets backed up to her core. Signs doesn't have the whole thing. And he doesn't know it yet. He'll be searching, which means we are still one step ahead. We need Sandy's core back. Which means we're probably going to have to fight Durbin to the death. The eyes drip terror, but the hands are still at it. Wait, what, what, is, what did she say? What does that mean? That, that sounded scary. It means we need plan. Ah, the old ancient exosuit trick. Three more and we earn three foot long submarine sandwich. Ugh, this one gives me creeps. Do you know how hard it is to give me the creeps? So how long was the ground able to contain this particular curse? Do we know? 680 years. And how do we come to that number? That black box uses a radioactive isotope cell to power the suit's locator circuit. Isotope Niobium-91 has a half-life of 680 years. Any longer than that, and the power cell would have died. Chief, I'm beginning to think maybe you're reading too many spec sheets? Hmm. Much younger than Origin Suit. Have you seen black box data? Sandy managed to hack it when Ace got near this chamber during the war game. Right, Sandy? Affirmative. The data was heavily corrupted. More time is required for a complete reconstruction and analysis. We are about to hear the last words of an exo-fighter. Words that have been lost to time for centuries. Orders, this might be the coolest day of your life. What I can't explain is why those greedy bastards never found it. Especially considering the suit's black box has a standard locator beacon. It literally sat there for centuries, signaling its location on the rescue frequency. Anyone up there with a locator could have found it in a matter of seconds. The original suit was so old, the beacon was long dead. I guess they didn't think to look. Tragic lack of imagination. Was it you? Come on, Ace, don't look at me like that. Was it you? You shot the watchers down, didn't you? Well, well, whoever it was, I'd like to give them a medal. It damaged their network security. I was able to get past the system's protections and intercept this. It's drone data. The Watchers are constantly transmitting it back to Leviathan. Basically, his eyes and ears. It's been watching the Exo Fighters, but it looks like it's also been recording data from the dinosaurs, too. Correct. There are numerous variables being reported in the data transmissions. Reflex response, fight or flight reactions in each subject, violence index. So the question is, why is the Leviathan suddenly studying dinosaurs? Ace, listen to this. I had Sandy search for any mention of the headhunters in the radio transmissions we intercepted during the war games. Sandy! It's us! Hold your fire! She's dead, Marcassi. We gotta move! She's right there! Bedtime song grandmother would sing when we could not sleep. But, you know the one? The viper and the suckling pig? <clears throat> ah, Ace, maybe do us all a favor. If you see a headhunter, head quietly in the opposite direction, yeah? So, uh... I've got a theory about these headhunters. Sandy? The spinal column of the exosuit mimics that of the human body. It sends autonomic nerve signals to the suit's limbs in survival situations. 
The suit can process reactions to pain and adrenaline spikes that happen too fast for a pilot to react. It's reflexive, like jerking your hand away from a fire before you consciously made the decision to move it. It's incredible, really. The exosuits are capable of anticipating attacks. Their unique sensor packages are constantly processing all kinds of battlefield microdata from moment to moment. Alders, we are two pilots and engineer. We know this. But then you know the human pilot is the bottleneck. The suit itself is faster than we are. Faster than you, maybe. Well, we all have our little imperfections. The spinal unit was designed to offset those human shortcomings. And we all know Leviathan uses the data from war games to continually perfect the suits. Do you see? The exosuits those pilots were wearing are constantly upgrading themselves to be ready for any combat situation, whether the pilot inside is ready or not. All these exofighters sent to die to improve a system that was created to keep them alive. This is major big-time psychopath. Or the AI equivalent. See, it's contrary to the directive. The only way artificial intelligence can go wrong like that is if the input data is biased or wrong. It would only be possible if you mess with data already coded in an AI's root architecture. It's black box, so to speak. Now, what does that have to do with headhunters, you ask? I did not, but I would have. Continue. If you give an AI like Leviathan the directive, improve our exosuits, it has to complete it. It doesn't matter whether that takes a hundred tries or a million, all that matters is using whatever data the exosuits send to increase the suit's survival capabilities. See, look at these early exosuits in combat. They're acting like humans, protecting each other, trying to stay alive. But if something happened in Leviathan's black box, say someone at IBS decided human empathy was slowing down efficiency, and say added new black box data to Leviathan, it would alter exosuits updates. But what kind of data turns exofighters to headhunters? What has primal killer instincts, lacks the brain development for a complex emotion like empathy, and already contributes to the stream of data that Leviathan is tracking? That maniac machine is using dinosaurs to program exosuits? That's my theory. But listen to this. See, the suit accepts the update from Leviathan, then starts fighting like an animal. I think the headhunters are Leviathan's prototypes for the next evolution of the exosuit. But pilots can override suit's combat choices. If you are right, what is keeping pilots from overriding the suit? They're already dead. Think about it. Anytime an exofighter dies with their suit intact, Leviathan can slot the new combat instinct data package into the suit spinal column. And voila, instant headhunter. Zombies. You're talking about zombie exofighters. Zombie dinosaur exofighters, not to put too fine a point on it. <sighs> Grave robbers. All for the perfect suit. More than that, if Leviathan's doing this to the software, what's it doing to the hardware? What are you making, Grave Robber? Hmm. Odd. What now? Well, Haruka, the Chief's sister. The IBS security put her workstation on lockdown when she was fired. But before they could investigate, a million tons of space elevator fell on them. They never worked out what she was working on. What? This? Haruka's last act as valued member of IBS family was conversation with Mystery Man? Oh, I wish we had Haruka's side of the conversation. Any idea who she was talking to? No, that's the weirdest part. There's no sender, no IP address, no network data of any kind. See, she was talking through Leviathan's network, but it's like no one was on the other end. She was talking to a ghost.
Analysis complete. What's that? I have restored the corrupted data from the Bikitoa ruins. Oh, brilliant. The data's locked. Sandy, can you run a system check? All systems are functioning. <sighs> Damn. Anyone got a 600-year-old password lying around? Can we... Oh, I don't know. Hack it? How many possible combinations could there be? A six-digit numerical password has exactly one million possible combinations. With a processing time of 20 seconds per attempt, the analysis would require 16,666 days, 66 hours, and 66 minutes. Maybe we get lucky, and it's 000002. It's our best bet, I suppose. Hack it, Sandy. Understood. I've got it! Hmm? Did you say something? This Bikatoa was some big brain exofighter. 600 year old password, Chief said. Yes? Look, look. Six pillars, six different height, give you six numbers. No way. Cindy, try one, three, six, two, five, four. Son of a bitch, you did it, man. She, she, she actually did it. Hush, listen. Hello. My name is Victoria Ivanovna Ignatieva. What? If you are hearing this, it means either the mission of my people still has hope of success, or Ivias found my exosuit and our fight was in vain. Majesty? Shh. I do not know what time I was sent to. What I do know is that I have been trapped here for 17 years now. My grandmother would say, Hope for God, Victoria, but do not be reliant. I have never been reliant. This is why I made this recording. If you have my suit, you will have questions. Ah, the cause of... Um, the cause of everything is space-time distortions. I am from year 2051. In my time, IBS had built space elevators all over the world. These stratovators are giant fuel extractors. They drill into time to extract the fuel source we know as Heisel. <laughs> Everyone wanted Heisel. Limitless energy at low, low price. They had no competition and demand is great. The more we had, the more we wanted. Stratovators and the fuel they extract made IBS unstoppable. You would think such an advanced society would know. Ah, but the mines are always paid twice, huh? And the debt is red when paid. Every ounce of Heisel distorted our time and space, drop by drop, bringing every little bit into our time, cause bending a four dimensional cosmic grid of reality. And reality was tearing under the stress. This is how you get T-Rex in Times Square and Raptors at a tennis championship. It was happening everywhere. No hope. In my time, I was leader of resistance against IBS. Revolutionary. My comrades. My friends. I remember with great pride. Our mass protests were answered with citywide curfews. We were told anyone who resists law enforcement would be treated as terrorists. They left us no choice but to become what they feared. A resistance to be reckoned with. We freed political prisoners, bombed distribution centers, hacked drone ships. Oh, we managed to commandeer a stratovator and take it offline. That is when we found Yannick Nadi. Nadi was the key. Nadi, from Haruka's message. <coughs> Alders! Ow! Right, sorry. It was Nadi who gave our movement the missing piece. The original time travel technology behind Heisel and IBS Empire. I used it. The 
The plan was to go back in time and prevent the construction of first Stratovator. I was to reset the entire timeline. According to Nadi, it was possible. And we were out of moves. The time seemed like the only way. You could call it Nadi's dying wish. To right the wrong, Ivy's wouldn't. We thought we could be heroes. Look where that got me. Cast away in time. Hope for God, but do not be reliant. Oh, maybe this is all waste of time. I have recorded this message again and again, and erased them all. I worry how it might affect the future. Part of me wishes I could give up and let it all happen again. The people on this island, they cannot tell me what the Earth is. There's no concept of Gregorian calendar here. They've never seen horse and buggy, let, let alone an exosuit. They call me the Katoa. I can make fire with my fingertip. Leap to the tallest treetop. I am short as hell on miracles, but I can offer gift. Encrypted in this recording is a time-space algorithm we stole from Ivius. It brought me here. Now perhaps this information can aid your resistance. If Ivius exists in your time, they are making my world again. I still have hope. Very unlike me, I know. But it is you I rely on now, comrade. Use the algorithm and know that sometimes something becomes so corrupt so ruthless, so ruinous. The only way to change is to burn it down. Don't let it get that far. You cannot make revolution. You must be revolution. It is you or it is nothing. Good luck, my friend beyond time. Good luck, my friend beyond time. Bullshit! I'm not the revolutionary. Well, future you would disagree. This is not my future. You do not understand. Don't I? No, that is not what I meant. I'm just... Stop. Oh, why does this have to be so goddamn hard? All I wanted was to be IBS's top pilot. Number one. Been on sixth cruise in two years. You didn't know what you were getting when you got me. You think that everything is fine Mitch. if I do. Hey. We knew. My whole life. Is a whore. Oh, match, match, match. Easy. Look, you made your point, right? Or at least we can make it in a less ricochet prone environment. <laughs> yeah. Um, when did you get the gun back? What am I supposed to do now? Majesty. Victoria, feeling like your whole life is screwed? That just makes you one of us. Welcome to the Hammerheads. So, this is Other Me's data? Yes. Uh, I believe she called it a time displacement algorithm. It's similar to what Leviathan uses when it moves Ace through time. One, eight, one. Madge, this is part of Golden Goose. We can use this. So, how does it feel to be a goddess? Huh. On one hand, I can see it. It fits profile. <laughs> On the other hand, all those years I built my life around Ibius and being a badass exo-fighter. Now, there is me, 
IBS exo fighter, and me, badass revolutionary. It's much to reconcile. Like I said, fits profile. Have you had a chance to watch the video again? No. Maybe... Maybe watch it again sometime. And if it feels true, then... then maybe that means something. There you are, you bastard. I got him! It's Durbin! You found that Ras clot. He was picked up on a security camera near one of Anchor Division's facilities. He's got to be long gone by now. But it looks like having Leviathan on his side might be a slight issue. Looky here. Who needs security clearance when you have nine-ton Triceratops to open door? And the sign Anchor Division Data Center. Sandy, what's wrong with this picture? Why use a battering ram when you work with Dr. Garrett signs? Exactly! <laughs> Sandy, you're coming back, old girl. Well done. You fought desperately and survived. Your tenacity reflects well on this project. Excellent pilots should be preserved. But first, enjoy this excruciating trial. Activating Massacre Module. Summoning Neo T-Rex Swarm. Your final data will be historic. You can't spell Exosuit without you and I. Chief, were you using that to clean the hangar floor? I was. There, this is good for something. Right, I'll, um, dispose of this and reprint for records. Excuse me. Sure thing. They make very good coasters. Ace, someday, I'm going to meet a woman as excited about me as Martina was about that computer. I bet she got that race too. So this is how it fits. Yannick Nardi, you feisty bastard. Who is bastard now? Madge, you gotta see this. Ace! Chief! 
Peace, brother, peace. You have my attention. Okay, okay, so, so we've been getting all this weird data, right? None of it makes sense. But then, in comes the mystery man Haruka was talking with through Leviathan, who was also apparently part of Goddess Magi's revolution. All things we already know. And these images, the ones we thought were marketing mock-ups. Look, Yannick Nadi. And same here, Yannick Nadi. Same name, so? Yes, it's a name, but it's not just any name. It's his name. <sighs> okay, look. Ibis reverse engineers all their exosuit tech using the origin suit. And where there's an exosuit, there's an exosuit pilot, right? Alders, when was the last time you had sleep? Listen, the exosuit's brainstem bypass collects and stores all kinds of data from the pilot's mind. So, when Anchor Division pulls the data from the origin suit... They pull spinal unit of suit and bring pilot's memory data inside buffer. Got it in one. Yannick Nadi was the pilot of the origin suit and the digital ghost Haruka was getting messages from. If that's true, where did this Nadi come from? Ah, the 24th century. Welcome to the future, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, there's Stradivators up all around the globe. Well, here, you can read it for yourself. Go on. That's why I came back. Leviathan has to be stopped. They'll build Stratovators all over the planet. Stop for a moment and think about all the trouble we've had with one. Dinosaur outbreaks, space-time distortions, the chaos it's caused already. Now, imagine the world with hundreds of them. All owned and operated by Big Daddy IBS. Jeez of peace. This Noddy wanted to come back in time to destroy Leviathan. He wanted to save our future. He went a little too far back. Yes, I mean, he died in the Cretaceous period, so obviously. But that's not the point. The point is Yannick Nadi died trying to stop Leviathan. Which is how Anchor retrieved data from Origin Suit. They did the only thing that made sense. They loaded the Origin Suit data into Leviathan for analysis. And trapped the mind of Yannick Nadi inside the AI. <sighs> that is some time loop mindfuck. That poor, brave man. I mean, he became what he set out to destroy. It's like a great tragedy. And what did my sister have to do with this? Now that's the question of the hour. Nadi was helping Haruka with something. But what? How's the wound healing? Better. Why so worried? Oh, I'm not worried. I'm invested. I mean, I'm the closest thing you got to a nurse on this entire island. That's a comforting thought. What's the word on Durban? The word is slippery. By the time we've got a location, he's already gone. And what I wonder is, how is it he steps out of war games and keeps his head? Right? I mean, nothing happens to him. I think... Uh, he works for science. Maybe answer is there. Well, we'll figure it out. And hey, take it easy and get yourself healed up. Just between you and me. If Ace bites it out there... Alders... Well, we'll need you to pilot it. Ace! Ace! I just... How, how are you? Like, you step so quietly for someone in combat boots. Like, so, how... Oh, you. Chief, I've got something here. What am I looking at? Everybody knows Anchor Division used a silent security shell around their servers. Any external communication had to pass through the buffer before being broadcast. But what they might not have known is that also applied to their private terminals. So, I had Sandy hack in and search for any communication that was stopped before it could get off the island. And this was the fruit of her labors. It's from Haruka. It's an email. It's addressed to you, Chief. I, um, I haven't opened it. I'll just, I'll give you a minute. Yeah, thanks, Sandy. 
How long before the incident was this? Five days, Chief. Good. She needed me, and I didn't know. I have located a research memo from Anchor Division. Okay, new Sandy. We need to have a chat about research memos. They're long, they're dry, they bored the kneecaps off even the people who had to write them, and they very rarely contain anything of use. Uh, before your, uh, reset, we used to read through hundreds of the things. This memo matches several key search parameters. Let me guess, we're out of coffee, does my hydraulic cylinder look big in this, and who keeps licking my petri dishes? Negative. The matching parameters are Leviathan. Access. Command. Whoa, what? Let's take a look. Signs commissioned a single-user Leviathan access key. And look at the date. It's right after Haruka's stunt that set fire to the lab. It grants access to watches and vortexes. This is what Durbin's using. Signs gave Durbin limited command access to Leviathan. What was he thinking? Oh, I can't take this anymore. Every single war game. Ace is rolling the dice on staying alive. We lost Magnum and Sandy to Durban. Surprising nobody, science turns out to be a double gross and rust cloth. The, the port engine is still leaking fuel. We haven't found my sister, and this jungle heat is making me sweat like mad. Is signed of healthy glands. Strong like bull. Sounds like you need some good news, Chief. Oh, give me any take. Sandy, take it away. Durban has made a critical tactical error. We have exploited his mistake and discovered his location. We've got him? Like Ace with a ham sandwich. It's just a matter of time. Before the incident, Signs commissioned a card key that grants access to Leviathan and locks out anyone else who might try to shut it down. And we're guessing Durban has that card key, and so he's getting overconfident. Durban repeatedly appears on surveillance cameras across the island. He's going all over, probably trying to track down the remaining pieces of Golden Goose for signs. Little does he know, we have a piece he'll never find. Thanks to our resident deity here. I am kind and loving God. Durban's location, direction of travel, and travel time to the location in each image reveal that he always commences travel from the same position. Or to translate, he starts every war game in the same place. Right here. All we need to do is get there first and whack, like Chief setting down can of beer. <laughs> now that's more like it. It's about time Durban started feeling the heat. Sandy, we're going to get your brain back in no time. That is confusing. How about it is? Ready for a little payback? What now? To invade another people's dimensions, asshole? Death by firing squad, apparently. But at least do me the courtesy of looking me in the face whilst you do it. Huh. Brilliant. Ace. You're looking pretty good. You see, in my dimension, you had a little accident. Exploding Heisel tank. Had to fit you with a robot arm. Very disqualifying. Cut the shit and hand over the memory core. You came for this. <laughs> Take it. See, I have a better AI. I do have to warn you. If you try to shoot me, 
Leviathan will open a vortex right in your head, and you won't be solving that with a prosthetic. He's bluffing. Your call, Ace. Tick tock. Tick tock. I'm telling you, he's bluffing. It's me. Leviathan! Send them back. Shoot him! This war game ends when I decide. Well, next time, don't listen to me. Listen to me. How's everybody doing with this? One of him was ample. This isn't Sandy's cause. I hit signs great. Something we could get you, Alders? I'm fine, Majesty. Who are you lying to here? What, Majesty? It's just us! What do you want, Madge? You want to know what the monthly nut was on this thing out there? It was just a little bit more than my rent. And I spent loads of time on poor me. I should have been whole. I should have been what? Him? Him? Are those my choices? A dead-eyed bloody murderer or a penniless cripple? He is everything I said I wasn't. There he is, and he's better than me. No, he's better than me. Alders. Fuck that asshole. Huh? No, listen. Fuck that asshole, okay? Thanks, Matt. Come on. Okay. Thanks, Matt. I'm sorry. No, uh -uh. Sorry, guys. Hey! What's all this? You never do a group hug on this ship. Now the chief. Chief. Ah, ah, yeah. Chief is squeezing us in. Is that what I think it is? We've caught the explosion on video a few times. Here. This is the clearest angle. Every time I think about it, it makes my blood boil. Haruka died because of what happened on this island. If we don't do something, many more good people like her will too. I can come back to this, Chief. I don't want it. No. Leave it on the screen. We should have a reminder of what's at stake. You found another 181 file? Sandy did, yeah. This is another piece of Golden Goose. Well done, Sandy. I am glad to be of assistance. If Durbin doesn't have this yet, we could bait trap. Maybe. Not sure I can invent a trap to trick myself. All we can do is... Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Look at this connection port. Sandy? Sandy, what's the diameter on the thingamy in the transmitter? The aerial connection bus trunk radio, you know... The diameter of the radial antenna effect trunk connector socket is 18 millimeters. A uh, thank you, Sandy. Ooh, it fits. <laughs> it, it fits. I will reject obvious joke. Signs. Don't you see? Chief! Ace! Ace, you found Signs' skeleton clinging to the transmitter, right? Signs brought it to the island. He brought it because it's part of Golden Goose. It is some kind of prototype? Yes, he must have brought it here to finish it. No wonder it can communicate beyond normal space-time. This whole time, 
We've had a next-gen Vortexer right under our noses. Well, I need to concentrate, so I pop a caffeine pill. Then I need to sleep, so I pop a sleeping pill. These chemical hairpins are starting to get to me. Take brick. I will manage big time series data search. Look, no offense, but I've got this whole picture building up in my head and it would take you too long to catch up. Get out of way. You're just wasting your time. It's... <laughs> okay, go on then. Oh my god. There is tiny person stuck on Stratovator right before explosion. Wait, what? Look at this. All the cars locked down once dinosaur outbreak began. Except... This one started from ground 33 minutes before cable exploded. Wait, where does it say... Oh, uh, what? Someone was intentionally going up Stratovator during the Picatoa incident. How could you not notice this? Context is important, you know. Without all the facts, I just... Thick brick. I'll take a break. <laughs> One way or another, we've got to get my sister off this island. Sandy, tell me you found something. Current information indicates that rescuing Haruka Lorenzo is impossible. You found Durban, you can find Haruka too. Just keep trying. Chief, you're not listening. We can't rescue her. Sandy didn't say we can't find her. I wasn't going to tell you until we had a bit more to go on, but... Sandy? Evidence from the Stratovator control system suggests that Haruka Lorenzo was on board an elevator car when the Stratovator cable exploded. There's just no way to get to her. We knew someone was up there, we just... We just didn't think to check the onboard cameras. Sandy figured it out. Can't we contact her? Bring her back down? Well, that brings us to the other wrinkle. Sandy? Analysis of the Vortexer explosions reveals an extremely large volume of the presence of Lozal. But here's the thing. None of Leviathan's sensors were reading Lozal. Just stable, safe, highs all across the board. Chief, I think this was Haruka's plan in action. Nadi must have blinded Leviathan from the inside, disabled its sensors while she did something to the Hyzol pipeline. I know my sister. She got on that Stratovator, believing she could take down Leviathan. Haruka had a plan to destroy Leviathan without taking out the Stratovator. Then she doesn't need saving. She needs some help to make her plan work. My thoughts exactly. Something went wrong with her plan. Maybe we can set it right. Chief, look at this in her email. Crashing the Stratovator's opening party. Bring a jet. She was dropping hints about something. She wanted my help. That means there's got to be something we can do. You're right. It's just a matter of finding it. I have completed analysis of all data related to Leviathan from the Anchor Division's 2040 archives. Brilliant. Let's hear what we've got. Is this thing recording? Okay. Sidhu, this isn't necessary. It's protocol and it happened. It has to be documented. This is Sharon Sidhu, employee ID number 13614, August 10th at 11.38 a.m. Project title, Golden Goose. Come on, Sidhu, we're back inside normal parameters. At 11.09 a.m., we began our scheduled Vortex of Cable Operations test. Forward cable rotation system met or surpassed all safety metrics as expected. However, at 11.29 a.m., while testing the reverse rotation system, an incident occurred resulting in reverse Heizal flow up the pipeline. I did everything according to the specs! Nowhere in the specs does it say to turn on the Heizal systems when the vortexes are running in reverse, Todd! The disruption lasted only several seconds during which time the Hyzol flow was destabilized, causing a flood of Lozol in the Vortex's tanks. Leviathan then instigated a highly dangerous systems purge. And it worked. What's the big deal? 
What's the big deal, Todd, is that Lozal made up almost 15% of the mixture in the pipeline system at the time. And this is my point. At that volume, you'd need to get past 60% Lozal before there was any danger. Lozal is perfectly safe in smaller concentrations. You know what's not perfectly safe, Todd? Leviathan, purging a hundred tons of Lozal through the system bottleneck. And do you know what's down through the bottleneck, Todd? It's the vortexes. And do you know what can happen to the concentration there, Todd? You don't. Because if you'd read all the specs like you were supposed to, you'd know that could have been very, very bad, Todd. Bottom line, Dr. Sainz. It's become clear Leviathan Stratovator emergency protocols are currently not in line with IBS health and safety operation guidelines. I'll be following up with a formal report on today's test results and suggestion for improved safety protocols. And a counter report from me. Okay, yeah, you do that. And while you're at it, file a report to your brother-in-law in HR and tell him Dr. Sidhu says, fuck you very much, Rich, for endangering everyone on this island by strapping me with Todd. Finally! Everybody, come check this out. May I present, nestled among the highs all infrastructure and all the way up on the Stradivator, it's Leviathan's core. How much high soul is in there? Best guess, 10,000 liters. I did not know they made high soul tanks bigger than 100 liters. With that much Heisel, you could power 81,600 average homes on a sunny day in the south of France. Yes, that was exactly what I was about to say. Good going, Sandy. Chief, are you all right? That's the message Ruka sent you. And there it is. Crash the opening party. There's more to it than that, though. Sandy, tell him what you found. A portion of the message was encrypted. Encrypted? Haruka didn't want IBS to see it. But this is the part I don't get. Polybius, my high score? I don't get it. Polybius is some kind of game. Polybius wasn't actually a game chief. More of an urban legend. I believe Haruka is suggesting we decrypt the message with a Polybius square. So? You do not need to ask permission. I decrypted the file five minutes ago. Ah, see? The student becomes the master. I am honored, Victoria. The Katoa in danger. Unstable tech. Need help to destroy the AI Leviathan. Bring an aircraft that's able to reach the Stratovator control platform. What's that last bit about? I will provide a device. Haruka also wants to take Leviathan out of the picture. So she wanted us to get to that control platform. She was trying to give us something. Uh, Sandy, pull up the control platform. Well, Leviathan's core is right there. Around the core, Heisel tanks. Those tanks hold hundreds of thousands of liters of Heisel. Now, now look here. Heisel flows right through these pipelines. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. That's it. That's it. The incident. Those pipelines. S Sandy, S Sandy, play that voice recording describing the Vortex error. The disruption lasted only several seconds during which time the Hyzol flow was destabilized, causing a flood of Lozol in the Vortex's tanks. And this is my point. At that volume, you'd need to get past 60% Lozol before there was any danger. The tanks store both Hyzol and Lozol. And if we can convert at least 60% of that mixture to Lozol, I think we have just the tool to do that. Golden Goose? Golden Goose, Chief. What can Golden Goose do? Convert Lozol to high zone? How does that help? A fuel conversion doesn't have to be a one-way street. Look, there is warning. Do not allow this component to revolve counter to the indicated direction. Revolve? Listen, if we reverse the revolution of the cylinder, we can synthesize Lozol from high zone. Haruka knew this. That was her plan. Haruka and Nadi wanted to destroy Leviathan's core. 
They were going to do that by converting at least 60% of the Hyzol in those tanks to Lozol. Noddy bought Haruka the time she needed by deactivating Leviathan sensors, so Haruka converts the Hyzol back to Lozol. But Leviathan detects this newly converted Lozol and proceeds to flush it down the pipeline at once. Self-preservation. The Lozol in the pipeline mixture exceeded that 60% threshold, and Haruka's plan backfired, literally. Noddy was wrong in assuming the sensors could be deactivated, and Haruka couldn't convert the Hyzol all on her own. She needed help. So she asks Chief for a hint. Bring an aircraft that's able to reach the Stratovita control platform. I will provide a device. She wanted to give us Golden Goose. Lucky for us, we got a Golden Goose prototype right here. We're gonna take this bird straight to the control platform, reverse those cylinders, and turn all that Hyzor to Lozor. Once we hit the 60% sweet spot, we're gonna blow Leviathan sky high. <laughs> the plan's crazy, but it's got Haruka written all over it. Crazy? I love it. I don't suppose you could introduce me to this sister of yours, Chief? And save the jokes for when Leviathan's go. It's a good plan. Short, sweet, explosive. So what do we wait for? Well, there's still one problem. Haruka's in the year 2040. Last I checked, this carrier can't hop through time. And Ace is the only time traveler among us. There has to be a way. Leviathan's calling up dino freaks from millions of years ago, while Haruka's stuck just three years in the past. Well, temporal distance isn't the issue, but... You know who is expert in solving these kinds of problems? Science. Even if he could solve this, why would he? So what we need to find is leverage. Three years? What the hell happened in three years? That would make me end up like Durbin. You're thinking about it the wrong way. What happened that made you end up like you? Yeah, I get where you're going with that, Chief, but I hate to think getting my arm burned off made me a better person. <sighs> I don't know. I, I just, so much has changed since 2040. Both of you are looking at it wrong. It is only three years, which means you and Durbin are practically the same person. But come on now, don't rub it in. What majesty is saying is, you can think like him. Maybe outthink him. Get crazy deep all up in his head. Okay, I don't even want to imagine. Olders, we need every advantage we can get. I know what it is like to see yourself doing things you cannot conceive of. I know it hurts. But you must think. Pretend you're Durbin. You're a total piece of shit. Yeah, a real fussy hole. A turtle t Yeah, yeah, yes, okay, okay, I think I've got it, thank you. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'm, I'm Durbin. I have Leviathan on my side, so... So I won't try to stop the war game. I'm, I'm safe. And I, I haven't gotten what I want yet. And what you want is? Golden Goose. I mean, I want Golden Goose. It's one of the most important inventions in history. I don't want the money. It's, it's more than that. I, 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 I want control. Yes, I want control of my life, of the world. It, it's ego a go go. Yes, this tricks. But you don't have to agree quite so quickly. So you're just going to give it to science? No, of course not. I want it for myself. Right. Right. I, I want it for myself. Olders, remember that time you told Sandy what you were like before you lost your arm? Always, you do everything yourself. Never trust anyone. That's it. I, I, I know what Durbin's going to do. He's going to stab signs in the back. We can use this. Let me talk to signs. <laughs> I don't know what this is, 
But unless I'm mistaken, you have a war game to worry about. Don't call me again. You've got something to worry about too, Doc. What's that supposed to mean? Seen old Durbin recently. I bet he hasn't been around much. Guess he's been busy with his wild... I'm sorry. Golden goose chase. Take a look at these signs. What on earth? That's Durbin breaking into a secure anchor division facility. But he didn't tell you that, did he? Durbin's turned against you. He's making a play for Golden Goose. Solo. This is preposterous. You're probably right. But then again, take a good look at me. Yeah, I'm him. Hmm, more or less. Funny business, this alternate timeline stuff. So when I tell you Durbin's turned, just ask yourself. What does Durbin do when he no longer needs somebody? What? No! Durbin, wait! You don't understand my arrangement with Durbin. That arrangement disappeared the moment you gave Durbin your Leviathan access key. How did you know about that? I didn't have a choice. Aw, oh, poor baby. He didn't have a choice. I mean it. You never wondered why I called your frequency in the first place? Come on, why there was a version of me dead and rotting in your junk, hmm? I was working with the other Garrett sides, including the one in your timeline. Leviathan killed them all on sight. I'm the only one left. My only hope was to use an exo-fighter working inside the war game. It doesn't matter now, Sykes. We almost completed Golden Goose. What? You and Durbin stole the plans for the Revolution Cylinder and Stabilizer Chip. But we have your prototype, the Reaction Gate, and even the Time Displacement Algorithm. Please, I'm begging you. Give them to me. That's not the way this works. We got plans for your device, Doc. What are you going to do? We're going to jump this carrier back to 2040. And convert all the high zol in Leviathan's tanks to low zol. The computer dies, the island lives, change places in handy dandy. My god, you're insane! <laughs> what difference does it make to you, Doc? Either we win or we die. And Durbin's going down with us either way. That'll save your skin. You're serious? If Leviathan dies, the world will lose Golden Goose technology forever. No more highs, all Kiss that golden future goodbye. What makes you think I'll allow that? Destroy my life's work? Help you even? Life is full of complicated choices, Sides. Right now, yours is to help us, or we leave you to Durban. How do we jump the carrier to time? Every second brings Durbin closer. He could be right out side. Okay, okay. You already have what you need. That prototype should be capable of sending matter back to 2040. It just needs an update. This is the Golden Goose firmware I left behind on the island three years ago. Durbin stole it from another exoplanet. This is Magnum's data. There's one other problem, power. That prototype is supposed to be fitted with a revolution cylinder to amplify its power. Without that, you'd be lucky to send a model airplane back to 2040, let alone your whole carrier. Leave that to us, Doc. We'll take a something. There. I've held up my side of the deal. You hold up yours. Stop Durbin. Unlike your side, we can be trusted. If we get out of here alive, everyone's getting out of here alive. Hammerhead out. Ladies and gents, I think we can actually do this. For once, we have the advantage. Welcome.
welcome to the war game. This combat test has been executed by a third party. I did not establish the parameters, however they are in line with research goals. Prepare to contribute combat data for collection. Let us begin. I will transfer you to the combat zone. Prepare for battle. Interdimensional transfer complete. The war game will begin shortly. Have a super day. Bravo, Leviathan. This is quite a fight. Oh, come now. So determined. But your death is inevitable. Wave bye-bye. That data won't be yours for long. Golden Goose is within reach. I will control the future. You've interfered enough. And honestly, I have been gagging. Exosuit development project is nearing fruition. Exofighters, the effort of each and every one of you is greatly appreciated. Prepare for dimensional transfer. Durbin, you have proven yourself to be an invaluable test subject. Now haven't I just... It's a matter of time till I get your goose. Leviathan and the behemoth, my magic scent. So when you sleep, sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Incoming transmission. It appears you can't trust anything nowadays. Durbin, this is not what you think it is. Shut up, science. You have to understand. You've already lost. I am in control. Allow me to demonstrate. Leviathan! Hey. What? No! no. no. Come over here and try that. No. I think you're going to come to me. You see, you have half the data, and I have half. So when you feel up to the fighting, you know where I'll be. Wait, wait! Let's settle this. You and me. Well, what do you say? No. I hate that guy. Okay. Just hold that steady while I fasten the cover, and this bird is ready to fly. Oof, it's very heavy. Good thing I'm healing. Did I ever tell you about the time I nearly died over the Baird Sea? Yeah, 
is now the time. Just, just bear with me. So there we were. Long haul cargo run to Murmansk. Flying through an Arctic storm. Getting to point, please. Suddenly, the right engine loses thrust. Then the left. They're cycling, but there's no power. We're losing altitude, dipping the nose to keep ourselves out of a storm. <laughs> the Arctic Ocean's starting to get real big in that windshield. And we're trying everything to get those engines firing. Yes, I'm with you. Very good. That's when I realized it was so cold, there was ice forming on the fuel filters, blocking the flow. The engines were stopping. <clears throat> and so you fix and save the day all done. Hmm, that's when I remembered the APU. Anyone? Yes? Dolders? That's right. The auxiliary power unit. I fired her up and let her overheat. Could have blown up at any sick, but it was warm in the fuel, melting ice. We're down to 500 feet when suddenly, wow, the engines come back to life. I can smell the APU cooking from the cockpit, but we made it back in one piece. Okay, you can let go. I'm glad you survived, Chief, but what is point? Mm, the point is, a jet like this is a machine full of machines. It's got redundancies built in. Cross feeds, backups, manual reversion, you name it. There's always something you can use to get the job done. Now, we want to jump the carrier back to 2040, but we need more power. I have an idea. Oh, Chief, what's all this? This is our way to Leviathan. We want to go to 2040. Not enough power. We want to help my sister make her Lozar plan work. Not enough power. As much as I hate to admit he's right, it's like science said. We needed that revolution cylinder. But Durban stole the data, and we couldn't fabricate one here anyway which meant we were out of luck, unless we use a substitute. The transmission cable linked to the carrier's generator drive shaft. Right. The problem with this little vortexer is not enough torque. It can't spin fast enough to generate the kind of vortex we need. So Chief linked it up to military-grade jet engine shaft. <laughs> I always knew this bird would get us off the island. What I didn't know was, I'd have to turn her into a time machine to do it. Sandy's working on the calculations now. Sandy, is this really going to get us back to 2040? Based on the firmware update we received from Dr. Garrett Sines, we have ample power to travel back to 2040 and confront Leviathan. And hopefully not back to Middle Ages like Bikitoa. You mean you don't want to be a goddess during the Inquisition? You tell joke, but where is Lev? I have records of the vortexes that transport Ace to the war game in 2040. We can follow Leviathan's example. Not comforting. And as for destabilizing Heizo, we did a little test. Look at this. Baboom! Lozo! Running this thing in reverse really works. We're going to take off, jump the carrier back to 2040, fly to the Leviathan's core platform, and turn Leviathan's fuel tanks into a ticking time bomb. There's just a matter of Durban. Who knows we're coming, by the way. But Ace will be ready to take care of that. Chief, all this sounds ridiculously dangerous. Not that I'm backing out or anything, but... Let me finish up here. Then we'll talk. There it is. We now know more about this island than anyone else on Earth. In multiple timeline color code. Yeah, it's pretty simple when you have all the pieces. Well, simple is a relative term, of course. Look, look, this is what started it all. The Origin Suits pilot, Yannick Nadi, tries to go back in time and prevent his future by destroying Leviathan, but ends up hurled back to the Cretaceous period. And that's the first change in the timeline. Nadi dies, and his exosuit stays buried for millions of years. Ibius finds the exosuit, 
and the futuristic technology, it blows their minds. They reverse engineer it, and they realize they've got their hands on an energy revolution. Heisel. And because they are greedy, unscrupulous bastards, they build a world full of Stratovators, all golden goose equipped to drill into the past and break down space-time, overseen by an unprecedented AI developed from Origin Soup Deck, which was exactly the world Nadi wanted to prevent. Which cues up Future Past You. Future Past You goes back to prevent Ibeas from getting Golden Goose, and thus, the second alteration of the island's history occurs, and the timeline changes again. The entire Bikatoan culture comes from Future You going too far back in time and being mistaken for a goddess. Then, we have a lull in the time travel antics with not much happening until 2020, but 2020 hits, and wham! Ibius finds the origin suit, and the entire cycle begins again. And so we come to August 16th, 2040. Ibius gives Leviathan full control of the Stratovator's Golden Goose Array, with nobody realizing it is obsessed with developing exosuits. Next thing we know, dinosaurs are raining from the sky all over Ireland. Leviathan makes itself perfect exosuit testing ground. Right, so Haruka tries to destroy Leviathan, but she can't because she can't create enough Lozol to do the job. She's got Yannick Nadi on her side, or some echo of him that's still bouncing around the IBS systems, but somehow, somehow Leviathan catches on to what they're doing. Surprise, surprise, machine programmed by Amoral Maniacs is Amoral Maniac. Leviathan purges all the Lozol off the Stradivader control platform, which explodes and sends the cable crashing down on the island. The bigger tour incident. Dr. Garrett Sines escapes alive, but Golden Goose is lost in the wreckage. Ibius stands to lose their Heisal energy revolution. And in the meantime, Leviathan's still running war games on the island. Repeating the Picator incident day after day, time after time. All while space-time distortions and dinosaurs become a damn pandemic and innocent people all over the world pay the price. Ibis creates problem and then sells world the solution. They form exo-fighter squads and we crash on the island and Leviathan gets ace as a new plaything for the war game. Magnum, Durbin, Dr. Sines and God knows how many others all arrive on the same way in their own separate timelines. Now Magnum thought he'd found a way out when he got part of Golden Goose, but that only made him a target for Durbin. And we were next. Little did we know, we were up against the most deadly foe of all. Me, with two arms. You forgot part about them being disgusting grave robbers, using corpse to do dirty work. Zombies. Ugh. Anchor Division, Haruka, Golden Goose, and... Uh, zombies. All of it, all of it, it's all there. What I don't understand What's this thing's motive? Uh, how does an AI become obsessed? Dinosaurs, self-preservation. There's no way for a computer to behave. Well, I think we've all seen just how little it takes for a really good AI to develop into something more. Compliment acknowledged. Oh, so much history. All of it leading to us. Right here, right now. I mean... You could almost call it fate. And look at us. Haruka's brother. Durbin's doppelganger, the goddess of Bikatoa herself, and Ace, the best exo fighter in the fleet. Second, Second best. best. Yes, right. Sorry, Madge. But the point is, out of thousands of exo fighter crews out there, it's come down to us. Mm, but the chart is missing one thing. What's that, Chief? We're about to be the most important thing that ever happened on this island. Sandy. Understood. Perfect. All hooked up. We can jump the carrier back to 2040 at any time. Okay, Sandy. What are our chances against Leviathan and Durbin? Processing. In 95% of scenarios, we die fighting. What if it's not just Ace? 
We fought alongside the other hard cases before. Run the numbers on a whole squad of Ixo fighters. Processing. Victory. <laughs> All right. In 32% of scenarios. This is our chance. We may never get another. We can't gamble on 32%. So how about 50-50? Flip it, Chief. It's... We wait for a better answer. Tails, we go and fight. No. We can't lead us to chance. None of us chose to be stuck on Bikatoa. But we didn't say no. True Leviathan. <laughs> How stupid were we to take that game? Oh, think we can get that sweet IBS life. Company makes it so easy to do nothing. Yeah. Let's do something. It is time for us to make history, not the other way around. We fight. We fight! My gun Oh, you're broadcasting this? Never waste a good speech. Oh, that son, I ain't even shaving. Knuckles all ashy. Cocoa put on this goddamn island. We're about to do something so goddamn dangerous, it might actually work. You're dumb enough to join us. Welcome to the Hammerheads. Oh, yeah. Once Leviathan is destroyed, we will leave Bikatoa Island. test with stratospheric growth potential. This is an aptitude test for the behemoth exosuit. Warning. Error detected. An un author. Unauthorized navigation. System. Not this time, you bag of bolts. Hey there, Axo fighters. Yannick Nadi here. I've hijacked the nav system and I'll try to guide you from inside Leviathan. Today, the AI dies. This is for all the marbles. This timeline's fate is in your hands. Free our future. Time to hit the battlefield. You might want to hold on to something. You're phased in. Show that tin plated tyrant you're here. Leviathan's core. <laughs> Those Heisel tanks, they're the way to the fireworks. Use this pipeline to convert the stuff to Lozol, and we can blow Leviathan's artificial mine. Hang fire! Something's brewing down there. It's a vortex! Fresh 
hell is dead.
initiating control override. Removing safety limiters. Annihilation module online. exception.
suspended to keep me loose. Farewell. Emergency transdimensional data transfer. Hang on, Chief. I'm just restoring Sandy and integrating interstitial experiences. Okay, come on. Oh, come on! VHF time signal confirms the year is 2043. Not bad. You are still the only one calling us that, Chief. What kind of attitude is that to have with the hammerheads? Okay, I'm so glad you love that. At the end there, what was that? Project Golden Goose, 100%. Chief? Send me main screen. Chief! It's Golden Goose, and we've got it. We're going to be real popular. Incoming transmission. Brace yourselves. Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Send me. Cockpit. Lorenzo. Big Brother, come in. Hulk. Brother? It's... it's me. It's... it's been a long three years. We can't stay on this frequency. Ibius knows you have Golden Goose. They've accused you of theft of corporate secrets. Keep flying. I'm sending you a data packet. Don't worry about me, I'm safe. Just... just get out of here. Hulk. Signing off. Sandy! Ready to assist. What's in that data package? Coordinates for a landing strip. Distance 1,600 miles. <laughs> uh, this bird is held together by duct tape and wishful thinking. So what do we do, Chief? I know a specialty. Whatever they won't see coming. Punch it. <laughs> <laughs> 